Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Deltona Commission meeting this November 28th, 2022. At this time, I would like to call the clerk up for the swearing in of Mr. Jody Lee. After me, I state your name. I, Jody Lee Sterosi. Having been duly elected. Having been duly elected. As City Commissioner District 6. As City Commissioner District 6. Of the City of Deltona. Of the City of Deltona. Do hereby solemnly swear and affirm. Do hereby solemnly swear and affirm. That I will support, protect, and defend. I will support, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And of the State of Florida. And of the State of Florida. From all enemies, foreign and domestic. From all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will faithfully support the provisions. That I will faithfully support the provisions of the Deltona City Charter. Of the Deltona City Charter. And ordinances passed. And ordinance passed. In accordance herewith. In accordance herewith. That I will faithfully discharge the duties. I will faithfully discharge the duties. As commissioner of the city of Deltona, Florida. As commissioner of the city of Deltona, Florida. And that I am duly qualified. And I am duly qualified. To hold the office of. To hold the office of. Which I am about to enter, so help me God. To which I'm about to enter, so help me God. This time I'd like to call the clerk to call the roll, please. Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Present. Commissioner Burbank. Present. Commissioner Colwell. Present. Commissioner Jody Lee. Present. Commissioner McCool. Here. Vice Mayor Bradford. Here. Mayor Vila. Present. This time I'm gonna go ahead and turn the meeting over to Vice Mayor Bradford for the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, everybody. Tonight we're gonna have Pastor William Bradley do our invocation. And everybody please stay risen. We will then do the are actually, we're gonna do the Pledge of Allegiance, then Yoleli Santos, Santos, who's 13 years old from Trinity Christian Academy is going to give us the honor tonight of singing the national anthem. blessings to be upon the city of Deltona and all its citizens. The Lord, we pray for the city staff and that you continue to bless them with the resources to bless our community. The Lord, we pray for our mayor and our commissioners, Lord, that you bless them with the strength, Lord, as they serve our community. And the Lord, I ask that you give them uh, gracious, you grant graciously grant them wisdom to govern in the midst of conflicting interests and issues of our time. The Lord, I pray that you give them a thirst for justice and rightness Father, I pray that you give them confidence to do what is good and fitting. And Lord, give them the ability to work together in harmony, even when there are some disagreements, Lord. And Father, we pray for the agenda tonight, and we pray that all things will be done decently in order, Lord. And when we leave this place tonight, we pray, Lord, that we will all have a mutual agreement, Lord. And so, Lord, once again, we thank you for blessing us to be here. Bless us with your peace, your power, and your divine protection in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we're hailed at 
the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we've watched we're so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs burn Sting in air, gay proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spang gold banner wave or the This time we move to uh, approve minutes of the special commission meeting of November 14th, 2022 and the regular commission meeting of November 7th as presented. Do we have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. So we have a motion by Vice Mayor Bradford and second by uh, Ms. Avila Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. All opposed? Nay. Okay. So we have six in favor and one in against. Motion passes. Presentations, awards, and reports. We have none tonight. Ordinances and public hearings. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna do the public hearing resolution number 2022-39, approval to transmit the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee of 2022 Incentive Review and Recommendation Report. Mr. Ron Paradise. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Commission, Ron Paradise, Community Services, for the record. Resolution number 2022-39 is a request for approval and transmittal of the 2022 Affordable Housing Advisory Committee, otherwise known as the AHAC, uh, SHIP Affordable Housing Incentive Strategies Report. The City of Deltona is an entitlement community receiving Strategic Housing Initiatives Partnership, i.e. SHIP money, uh, through the Florida Housing Finance Corporation. Therefore, according to state law, an entitlement community must form an, uh, an AHAC and prepare an affordable housing incentive report every year. The City Affordable Housing Advisory Committee is comprised of nine members uh, from various walks of life and discipline, including real estate professionals, finance specialists, uh, affordable housing advocates, uh, sitting commissioner, uh, local planning agent member, uh, et cetera. By statute, the AHAC is required to review, analyze, and report on numerous affordable housing incentive strategies ranging from expedited permitting to encouraging development around transit hubs and employment centers. The AHAC worked diligently the last year and I, I'm very thankful for the hard work that the AHAC put on, you know, on this report. Also, you know, the, the city's housing staff also did a wonderful job compiling all of these, these thoughts and ideas into this report. Uh, one note about the report on page 12, we got a little bit overzealous there and a little bit repetitive when it came to, how shall I say, uh, the, Ex, uh, a land inventory, and we repeated a paragraph twice. I would like to have the chance before we transmit this report to, you know, fix that Scrivener's error. Therefore, uh, staff recommends that the City Commission approve resolution number 2022-39 and direct the interim city manager to transmit the report to the Florida Housing Finance Corporation. I'd be happy to field any questions y'all may have with regard to this. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Paradise. 
This time I'd like to call on Vice Mayor Bradford. <clears throat> Again, I want to reiterate the thank you to all members of the AHAC and staff. I do have a question, and I don't know if this is cut in stone. One of the areas they were designating as the, is I-4 and 472. My concern with that is that is a commercial corridor that is right now where we have, you know, our manufacturing corridor, and that's commercial and mostly commercial properties and county. Um, do they have an area in mind over there? Uh, not specifically, no. I think that, well, I know that topic came up in the context of, you know, having some housing near employment centers and, you know, the idea of a transit hub also, that was kind of one of the logical areas that they looked at. Uh, I think there's been a trend that there's been some multifamily contemplated within that area already uh, with the Deltona Village element and also the Halifax Crossing uh, amendment to their, their uh, PUD that was approved by the City Commission uh, about a month and a half of two months ago. Okay, so they're looking at possibly making that Halifax Crossing area, you know, part of the low income? Uh, I, I think, you know, they, they looked at it in the context of workforce housing. Workforce, huh? Because yeah. I was thinking that was more of a um, senior living. Yeah, there was also a 275 unit multifamily, uh, non age restricted element to that proposal. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Now, Commissioner Vila Vasquez, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also just want to say, um, say thank you and congratulate the board and the city staff that put so much time into this project and into this report. Um, thank you so much. You guys are unbelievably awesome. Um, and, and I'm, on, I'm sorry, madam. Go ahead. And for the, for the record, the city commission, the city, city commissioner that served on the board was uh, Commissioner uh, Avila Vasquez. And it's been a pleasure to work with staff and the board. We have great volunteers. These are people who volunteer the time um, that come and serve on our board, rain, shine. I was gonna say snow, but we don't snow, right? Um, and I just wanna ask a question to, um, to our attorney. Is it a conflict of interest if I make a motion to accept this? No, ma'am, I do not believe it is. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. In that case, then I hereby, uh, if, if I may, Mayor, if there's nobody else has any other questions? There isn't anyone, but I think we have to go to public comment first. Oh, okay. And then you can make the motion afterwards. Uh, clerk, is there any public comments on the matter? No, Mayor. <clears throat> okay, this time I yield the floor to you then. Thank you, Mayor. I hereby approve resolution number 2022-39 and direct the interim city manager to transmit the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee 2022 incentive and recommendation report to the Florida Housing Finance Corporation. The interim city manager has the authority to make corrections of scrivener's errors and the like. We have a motion by Commissioner Vasquez. We have a motion by Commissioner Vila Vasquez. We have a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor Bradford. Clerk, can you please call the, uh, the vote? <clears throat> the motion passes seven to zero. <clears throat> okay, at this time we move on to item seven B which is a public hearing ordinance number 13-2022, Fernanda Place RPUD major amendment to include a new plus 43.55 acre phase, phase three, to the Fernanda Place RPUD at the first reading. I believe this is a quasi-judicial uh, hearing, so at this time I'd like to call uh, City Attorney Skip Fowler. Uh, anybody who would wish to testify in connection with this, would you please stand and raise your hand? <clears throat> and do you solemnly swear that the testimony you'll give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? I do. All 
All right, now I'm gonna ask the commissioners um, if we have any conflicts or quasi-judicial. Um. Mr. Mayor, if I may, I do have some ex parte communications to make public. Um, on the 17th of this month, I met with uh, Mrs. Brandy White in my office here at City Hall. Uh, our limits of that conversation were to uh, advise me that I might wanna go out and take a look at the site, which I did. That was the first one. The second, uh, Ex parte was with a fellow named Jose. He's in the back tonight. Hello, Jose, real nice guy. I was, I was parked and looking at the property. I saw a guy down the street. I thought he was waving at me. And I drove down there to speak with him. It turns out what he was really waving was a fertilizer wand. <laughs> but I spoke with him anyway, and, and he was pleased with the neighborhood. His only concern was all the cars parked in the street. Otherwise, that everything was fine. Uh, not much spoke about this particular project. It only dawned on me as I was driving away the irony of the situation, this guy waving a fertilizer wand at a passing politician. Um, my third ex parte communications, trying to find my way out of the neighborhood, there were two... Uh, two children, maybe second, third graders, two boys, uh, they were on their hands and knees at a street intersection, they were barking like dogs. Um, I did communicate with them because what they didn't know is I keep dog treats in the car and I just happened to have some milk bones with me. We had, we had, a, great chat, we had a great laugh. And then my last and fourth conversation was uh, last week on the 23rd with Mr. Watt, Mark Watts. It was a Zoom meeting taken here at City Hall. He, uh, he described the project to me in great length and answered any questions I may have had at that time. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner Burbank. Clerk, are you finished uh, calling the rest by alphabetic order? Commissioner Villa Vasquez. Yes, uh, today I took a drive um, through the area for the second time. <laughs> Commissioner Colwell. Yes, I also drove through the area today myself. Commissioner Jody Lee. I've driven through the area several times. I've also dealt with the same subject on the Planning and Zoning Board at several different times and spoke to different residents on occasions for this property. Commissioner McCool. No new ex parte communication. Vice Mayor Bradford. No new ex parte. Mayor Vila. I've walked the neighborhood several times and I have spoken to uh, one of the residents at the property. Thank you. Okay, at this time, do any of the commissioners have any questions? And we'll start off with Commissioner McCool. Oh, I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to ask a question of the applicant, please. If, if uh, w w one other, j just uh, a, f a couple other statements about the ex parte, or excuse me, the quasi-judicial nature of this. Uh, there's been, you know, some discussion in the past about what is somebody withstanding. That's a decision of the courts, and I'm kind of looking, you know, for acknowledgement from our city attorney. We found at minimum it's those that have been directly noticed through the 300-foot mailing list. Also, when you all prepare to vote on this, whether it's yay or nay, please provide reasons that are based on substantial and competent evidence along those lines to support your all's vote. And again, I get the nod, the nod of acknowledgement from the attorney, so I guess I'm, I'm not an attorney, but. Going in the right direction. Okay, I'm going in the right direction, so, maybe one day. <laughs> so let me just uh, reiterate something. So right now, is there any questions uh, for Mr. Paradise before we uh, go to questions to the applicant? One. Absolutely. I'd like to finish, that would be great. Mr. Would Paradise. I want to talk about the standing in an area, standing in this area here as far as 300 foot area, the radius goes. We've had discussion about this and I've also asked legal about this. There is no binding measure legally for that to be the only people that have standing, correct? It's just, that's what the city has chosen. That is, that is. 
that is my understanding of the law. I think that everybody can arrive at a conclusion that at minimum, those withstanding would be considered those within the 300 foot mailing list. Yeah, and I would like as we move along, especially going through our moratorium, sir, and I understand it affects this and others, as far as standing goes, I would like clarification on that because there's, the way Deltona is laid out, there's a broader scope of people that are affected and that have standing and I would like for us to take care of that because yeah. I just don't think we cover enough. Y that's yeah, my only that, question for you there, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. The, the with regard to that larger planning initiative, you know, that, that's a legislative process yep. and would not be subject to standing. Mr. Mayor, if, if you would uh, allow, I, I would be, I'm willing to give a presentation here yes. really quick. I, I, I am gonna call you next for your, that's yes, what sir. I was gonna yes, say. Sir. Please, your, your presentation if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Okay, ordinance number 13-2022, Fernanda Place phase three, is a major amendment to the existing Fernanda Place residential plan unit development that was approved by the city commission in 2015. The amendment involves adding 43.55 acres to the existing 102, 142 acre, no. 251 no. unit Fernanda Place phase one and phase two uh, plats. Uh, some highlights associated with the phase three addition is 43.55 acres, as we already mentioned. It involves the addition of 145 units. Lot sizes, the majority of the lot sizes are 6,000 square feet. There are three lots that are 5,250 square feet, and there's a handful of lots at the corners and so forth that some of them are, are northward of 13,000 square feet. There are several amenities planned, including a dog park, a pool facility, and a walking trail network. Uh, On-street parking will provide, be provided in a way that is safe and allows for emergency vehicle use, passage and, and use. The project has gone through several design modifications. This is not the first time this project's been heard by the city commission. The last time it was heard, it was remanded back to the planning and zoning board, which by the way, they voted six to one to recommend the city commission not approve this rezoning request. With that being said, <clears throat> The, there's been reduction of density down to 145 units. There's been changes to the plan itself in an attempt to minimize impact to historic trees. There are several live oaks that are larger than 36 inches in diameter on this project. If there is a th uh, removal of a historic tree. The applicant is uh, willing to mitigate for the loss of that resource. Let's talk about retrofits plan for phase one and two. One of the retrofits to address some of the parking matters in the existing subdivision includes addition of 56 off-street parking places to serve existing phase one and phase two. Also, the, the applicant is willing to restore and fix uh, an old excavation and amenity pond area that was left in abysmal shape. If they don't do it, eventually that area needs to be restored and that burden will probably fall on the shoulders of the HOA for phase one and phase two. Just talk about overall improvements. <clears throat> one is there will be a traffic signal added at Fernanda Drive and Hallam Boulevard and the developer will pay for this signal addition. And this is also predicated on a road being built between the elementary school to the north and the Fernanda Drive place. The, the intent is that all the traffic from the elementary school and the Fernanda project will be able to use that protected access point so they can make left and right hand maneuvers and even across to Golden Hills using a traffic signal. Uh, there will be fencing off of phase two to protect 
the cemetery, this is located near a historic cemetery that's located to the east of phase two. So they're gonna add some fencing to discourage off the highway vehicle use and so forth. Uh, all the amenities planned for phase three will be available for use by all of the residents in the project, including phase one and phase two. And the entire project will be managed under a unified property owners association. With that being said, staff does recommend that the city commission <coughs> approve or adopt ordinance 2022-13 and set uh, a second and final hearing for December 12th. Is that correct? So, and that's, that's staff's recommendation. I'll be happy to field any questions you all may have with regard to this. Thank you, Mr. Paradise. Are there any other questions on the board for the commissioner? For uh, Mr. Your Paradise? Your Honor, I have some questions, please, <clears throat> if I may. Um, you said uh, there will be a signal at Learning Lane and Howland. Uh, that would be Fernanda and Fernanda and Howland, okay. Yes. Uh, the staff report talks about they've been apparently the school has been talking to the county about signalizing their entrance road that is correct and, but it's they couldn't do fernanda because there's a separation distance between <coughs> fernanda drive and the school and um it, you did say that there will be a signal those were your words yes and yes in the staff report i reading that um uh, there are no warrants. However, if traffic between the school could be combined, there would be a logical warrant. I read that. A little further on, I say design and connection has not been fully determined. Um, so is it if or possibly if? It, it's the, the, that statement is meant for the design connection mm -hmm. uh, from Learning Lane to that parallel road. It's called New York Avenue between Fernanda Drive and the school. Understood. So there's no surety that the Volusia County will do this as there's been no permit applications i understand probably been preliminary discussions you know this is this may not be a bad idea but as at present th this connection could be years out the the requirement for this connection would be contemporaneously with the development of phase three thank you uh, one other footnote on that staff report I was guilty of a cut and paste error. It seems that this is not the first time this has happened. Uh, I apologize for that. We kind of got, you know, we kind of, we do recycle sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Paradise. For the other commissioners, there is a little button on the right-hand side, so if you have any questions, please feel free to click on it so you can be called up on and recognized. Um, I actually do have a question as well, Mr. Paradise. Yes, sir. You said that the PNZ board uh, voted to not approve, recommend to not approve the, That's the project, correct. correct? That is correct. How many times has it gone to the PNZ board for the same subject? This would be the, this would be the second appearance in front of the planning and zoning board. And how many times did the planning and zoning board not recommend it? Twice. Twice. Is there any insight you can give us on to why, what the concern was as to why they don't recommend this project? Yeah, they basically, they felt the project was too dense and incompatible with the existing neighborhood. Under, under the current code, what is the, I guess the, the, the what's allowable per, for how much land use? Right, right now, the, the, Future land use is urban low, excuse me, low density residential, which allows zero to six dwelling units per acre. That's the comp plan. The zoning is agriculture. It's not, agriculture isn't a widely applied zoning in the city, it's kind of a holding pattern. And the agricultural zoning does allow agricultural uses, including, you know, animal husbandry and fish farms and whatnot. There's just some examples that would be allowed. The, the, the agricultural definite, the agricultural uh, zoning classification also speaks to there being, you know, transitional uses and less intensive agricultural type of uses. But, you know, there's, there are agricultural uses that the, historically the site has been used for nurseries. And that's the reason why it held that agricultural zoning classification. 
Thank you. So I guess my last question would be, I know you said one of those, in one of those uh, meetings, it was voted not in favor six to one. What was the count for the other one? I do not remember the first one. I apologize for that. Thank you, Mr. Paradise. This time we're gonna allow the presentation. Oh. Vice Mayor Bradford. Real quick, let's just reiterate that because you kind of went off into the agriculture. Once this land zoning is changed from what I was reading on here, <coughs> our current policy is how many dwelling units per acre? Zero to six, right? Zero to six, yeah. And currently the density on this is 3.49 units per acre. That, that is so correct. So this actually falls within the city's density. That, that is correct, okay. yes ma'am. With the new zoning. Yes, ma'am, it does. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure because on here yes. it's saying that it is within. That is All correct. Right, yes, ma'am. Commissioner Avila Vasquez. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. I don't know if this question will be for you, Ron, or for the developer, but I have some questions about the um, roads, the entrance and exits of this community. Can you tell me um, how many entrances does this community will have to share uh, with one, two, and three? There will be one common connection point with, with three to Fernanda Drive, which extends ultimately to Howland Boulevard. So all those areas are going to be coming into one road to exit out? That's correct, yes ma'am. That is correct, okay. Um, and that's, is, and that's where you will be putting the, um, or that's where the plans are to put the uh, signal light at? Absolutely. And that, would that be Fernanda uh, Road? Yeah, Fernanda Drive, the intersection of Fernanda Drive, Golden Hills, and Howland Boulevard. Okay, so if I'm driving into Fernanda Drive, where, where is the connection to the other um, developments? It is located, I'd say, I'm not gonna guess how many feet, but as you pass a tier of houses, there's an open space there to the south, and then there's a, there'll be a right turn to go into what is planned to be phase three. Okay. So in order for me to, if I live in these, um, the third division, the third, construction site, I would have to travel through this first site. A portion of it, yes ma'am. Through the local roads to get to the exit. Yes ma'am. Okay. Um, so the um, Osteen Cemetery Road, that, that would be just for the emergency uh, units to get in, like the fire department, the sheriff's department, and so forth? That is correct. Osteen Cemetery Road is a prescriptive right away. It was stabilized during the county's dirt road reduction program back in the 90s. It's not suitable to support traffic associated with this type of use. Okay, and is it suitable to support our fire departments, our it, fire it, trucks? Yes, yes it, it, it will support the fire trucks. Because I drove to it and it's kind of narrow. I can't see our fire trucks driving through there. Would, it's that gonna be a problem for them in an emergency? I have not asked them, you know, to take one of their larger apparatuses down that roadway. I cannot say definitively that it would fit or not. I do, I did make the same observation that you did that it's, it's, you know, some of it kind of has a canopy road feel to it almost. Okay, driving down the, um, again, sticking to the emergency um, part of it, um, I noticed that on the size there is um, marsh or, you know, water around it. Does that overflow onto that emergency road? I do not know if that road was overtopped uh, by flooding uh, in the recent hurricane events or any other hurricane or, or flooding events. Be, uh, before that. So you will know if, in case of an emergency, if that road will be shut down? I don't they, know. You don't, all right. <clears throat> Thank you, Ron, for your answers. Thank you, Commissioner Avila Vasquez. At uh, this time, I'm gonna call Commissioner Jody Lee to ask questions to <clears throat> Mr. Paradise. Thank you, Mayor. The answer to your question before, Mayor, I believe the, the first time it failed, it, it got recommended denial 5-2. I was on a planning and zoning board at that time. 
and that, that road right now, with the last current bit of rain, it, last week when I went by, it was under, well, right after, a couple days ago when I went by, it was underwater, different parts of it, so it's, it's, are they planning on fixing, trimming all them trees going down that road? Because right now, the fire trucks will get we, we, we have not broached altering the vegetation of the roadway, Osteen Cemetery at all. Uh, so yeah. who's going to be responsible for doing that after if we approve this? Because the fire equipment, if there's emergency access, has to go through there. They have to go down that road. They have to go down it right now. Every time they go down, we're going to have to get a fire truck repainted. Yeah, again, that would that would be something the city. The city is ultimately responsible for that roadway. Gotcha. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner Jody Lee. At this time, I will ask the applicant's attorney to please come up for their presentation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of the commission, for the record, Mark Watts with the law firm of Cobb Cole. And my address is 231 North Woodland Boulevard, DeLand. And it's a, a privilege to be here uh, with you this evening and to, to see many new faces up here. I look forward to, to working with all of you for many years to come. Um, but I appreciate the chance to be here. Um, you know, as, as Ron detailed in, in his staff report, um, and I think many of you are familiar, uh, this is a project that, that's been underway for, for quite some time. Um, frankly, I think the original pre-application meeting that was held with staff was in November of 2020. And, um, and the applications have been pending since uh, somewhere around January of 2021. So we're, we're almost two years into um, working with the staff, um, various members of the city and the county staff and the school board staff, um, residents, other folks that we've heard from throughout the course of, of our, our several hearings um, to try and come up with you know, the right uh, design and, and set of conditions for this um, you know, the proposed amendment to the PUD. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple of uh, slides that I put together just to put everything into context. And then um, I do have Mike Galvin. Uh, he's the, the owner of the property uh, that represents phase three is here with me this evening. Um, Tina Lee with uh, Starlight and Ashton Woods Homes, who's the developer and the home builder um, for the Fernando uh, neighborhood. And then also uh, Joshua Edmondson, who's uh, the project engineer with Poulos and Bennett. So if any of the, them um, it can answer questions for you as well, um, they're all here. So with that, uh, let me just start briefly. I, I've added this slide actually today to, to kind of put things into a little bit of context because, you know, I realize that we're talking about an area and, and many of us have, you know, kind of talked about this area a lot in the past. Um, but this really represents sort of your edge. You've established this as the edge of the city. Um, you know, as Ron mentioned earlier, this has low density residential, which is your typical suburban residential land use classification already in place on it. Um, it's got agricultural zoning, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes. But if you look at, you know, kind of where it's located with Pine Ridge High School here to the, to the west, you know, the existing phases one and two to the north, You've got conservation areas that, that run along um, the eastern side, and then you know the traditional Deltona Lakes uh, subdivision pattern there to the south. So this really does kind of fill in your eastern edge with regard to the development pattern you've established and the future development pattern you've established with your comprehensive planning. Um, as I mentioned, you know, it, it, it's been pending. The application's been pending for quite some time. Um, we've spent that time really trying to work through a number of different questions that have come up. But one of the things that occurred was that, you know, when we started this process, the property was owned by the two owners of the, the former nurseries. Um, the nurseries are no longer in operation. The property has been acquired by Mr. Galvin and it's under contract to, to be sold ultimately to Starlight. So, you know, one of the things that, that I think just from a reality standpoint is something's going to move forward and occur on this property. We don't know yet what that form will be. We think that what we're proposing with the PUD makes the most sense because we're trying to help fix some of the issues that have been raised, you know, not only with phases one and two, but also some of the issues with connectivity and safety on the surrounding road network. So I'll go through and talk about those things um, here as we go through uh, the next couple slides. Um, one of the things that, that we did hear, um, both from staff and, and, and several of you, several members of the Planning Commission, was there, there were some existing issues that we needed to work on correcting. So you've got um, a total of 251 home sites within phases one and two. Um, On-street parking was one of the things we heard a lot about with regard to the, the problems that were there. Um, we've addressed that in phase three, and I'll talk about that shortly, but we've also uh, come up with some strategies to try and fix that in phases one and two as well. Um, so I'll, I'll go through those. 
Um, phase three fits to the south. Um, you know, you've got the existing you know, road connection uh, that would come through here. Um, again, general layout uh, is very similar to what you see in phases one and two. Um, we do have, and this is you know, to, the, to the question uh, Commissioner Villavasquez regarding connectivity, um, one of the things that your staff always asks us to do is plan for those future connection points as well. And so we do have the connect future connection point located to the south. You've got the connection point to Fernando Boulevard. You technically, this is all a public road network that runs up through the school. And that's part of the discussion that when we get into the actual design, Commissioner Burbank, to your question, we've, we, we, we haven't engineered what that looks like yet because we needed to determine whether the use would be permitted and the uses would be permissible first. Um, so we, we do specifically have the condition regarding the engineering of those connections and how that connection functions as part of the requirements before we could get a development order to move forward under the proposed rezoning. Um, but but just, just to briefly talk about phases one and two and some of the, some of the things that we've worked on. Um, Ashton Woods and Starlight Homes, the, the folks that are here pr proposing to develop phase three were not the original developers or the designer of phases one and two. Um, and so while we've, we've heard a lot of the concern regarding things like um, the pond excavation being completed, um, you know, the off-street parking areas and, and you know, adding some additional amenities, um, those are all things that we've tried to incorporate moving forward into phase three. And so I'll talk, talk about that as we, as we you know, get into the actual design of phase three. But let me talk briefly about um, you know, the amenity pond here. Um, this, this is an area, uh, frankly, that the original developer came in and originally had uh, 25 to 30 additional home sites located up in this corner of the property under the, the existing PUD. Uh, rather than move forward with those, they permitted what they referred to as amenity ponds in the permitting with St. John's, but essentially were borrow areas, um, the areas that they pulled fill material out of, both for the development of phases one and two and for some other offsite uses. Um, that use stopped when uh, the, the, the uh, phases one and two move forward with actual homeowners moving in, um, but it doesn't meet the current permit requirements for, for St. John's. And so one of the things that we tried to address, or we've tried to address with the PUD amendment is going back and fixing those ponds, uh, you know, completing the design, the construction of those ponds in accordance with the standards that the, the St. John's permit requires, but doing it in a way right now, that obligation is going to be there either way. Uh, the, 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 the pond areas are owned by the HOA, so either the developer is going to have to fund the HOA to, to do that work and, and to get it completed, or the HOA will have to fund it, but that work has to occur. What we've done in the PUD is try and manage the fact that that work has to occur with, in the context of a residential neighborhood. And so we've added terms to the PD that restrict the times that trucks can go through there to a very narrow time period from I think it was 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. so that we're not conflicting with school, um, kids walking to school and things of that nature. Um, and requires that uh, prior to that work commencing, a bond is put in place to guarantee that the roads, if there's damage to the roads, that the city has the bond to guarantee the replacement and, you know, and, and repair of those roads. And then finally, that there's a, an end date. Uh, I think we established six months, if I remember correctly, in the, in, the, in the development agreement, so that we have an obligation to go out and get that work done and have it completed within a definitive time period. So that was one of the, one of the primary things that we've got to do. And we have a site that we can bring it to on the south that is close by, um, that we can bring the, the additional fill material over to the phase three site and, and have it deposited there for use with, with regard to that development. Um, Off-street parking areas, I think you can see them here. I think I've got a slide in a second that, that has um, more detail, so I'll, I'll hold off on, on showing you those in particular. Uh, increasing the size and number of amenities. Um, this was really a point, if you remember back in July when this came to you, I think for the first time on first reading, one of the things that we were uh, asked and staff was pushing to consider, and I think you agreed at the time, or the commission at the time agreed, was that we needed to increase just the one uh, amenity center. Right now there's one pool located up in the, in the northwest corner of phases one and two. And so uh, the request was made to, to increase and diversify the number of um, you know, amenities. So if you see the layout that we have now, 
Uh, we originally had this area here set up as an area to be opened up as, a, as play fields, things of that nature. We restricted that um, and uh, actually are leaving that uncleared now uh, based on the comments we received from you, you all uh, at the last hearing. We added areas to preserve the historic trees throughout the site and turned this into a dog park area. And then we've created an amenity here that is intended for another pool area. Um, we've also received some, some feedback from the residents that they would prefer to have something other than a pool there. So we've actually had a survey done recently, about 76% of the 39 residents that did respond said we'd rather do something like courts, you know, ball courts, things of that nature. So um, we're happy to do whichever uh, the HOA and the residents uh, decide that they would prefer. Um, I just talked about a lot of the things that I just covered on this slide. So again, this, this kind of reiterates the, thing, the points that I just made. Um, the other thing we did in phase three is we added width to the right of way um, so that we can avoid the issue that we've seen in phases one and two. We've added a right of way profile for phase three that allows for on-street parking on one side and doesn't restrict the access that your fire department has asked for for the largest apparatus they have. So this layout and design is, design, is intended for the largest truck that the fire uh, department has to circulate through the neighborhood without conflicting with the on-street parking. Okay. Um, all right, tree preservation, let me just touch on this before. Again, the site is mostly clear um, because of its, its prior life as a, as a nursery. Um, there is a tree line through here. What we've done in the, the updated design is go to the areas where we saw the largest stands of the, of the largest trees and preserve those. Um, we do still have some trees that, that will come out of there because of the, the road uh, conflicts and, and some of the development conflicts. But again, we're, gonna be, we're not asking for any relief from your requirements that we mitigate those or try and avoid them and we'd have to go through that process to get approval from you as we go forward in design. Okay, so all of the different changes. Um, the one thing I do, did want to point out here, these are some of the areas in phases one and two that we've identified for additional off-street parking opportunities. Um, all told, there's about 45 additional parking spaces that um, are throughout phases one and two that provide opportunities for residents there to, to have overflow or visitor parking. We've tried to locate that at various locations throughout the site. In addition, as Ron alluded to, uh, the blue line you see here is an existing public right-of-way that's a half of the previously un unopened um, New York Avenue right-of-way. So that's an old plat that's been there for decades. Um, half of that right-of-way was previously vacated. The other half we're proposing to open. And then Mr. Galvin has uh, acquired contract rights to um, basically create a 60-foot wide total right-of-way that shifts that further to the, to the west, but provides a public road connection that connects Clarion, Learning Lane, through this area and down to Fernanda Boulevard to improve the access and circulation in this area. Now, as part of that, and Mr. Burbank, or Commissioner Burbank, to your um, question earlier, we have coordinated with the county. We've talked about that signal. Obviously, we have a use permit process that we have to go through in order to get that final approval to do that, and we'll have to do the signal analysis with part of that. Um, but we do know that there previously was, was a need for a signal at Learning Lane and no funding to do it, so this was a way for us to create a signal that was accessible to both the school traffic and the resident traffic and create a, a safer condition accessing uh, Howland Boulevard. So um, last thing I'll mention, um, and this was something that came out of some of our discussions about a year or so ago um, with the county, uh, the city manager, um, Peters, was that the city was looking for some strategies uh, or some help with strategies for affordable housing. And so the, the proposed PD amendment also includes a uh, contribution to the city of $100,000 toward affordable housing strategies. And so um, that's also included as one of the, uh, the proposed amendments. Um, I mentioned this already, uh, but this is the, you know, kind of the, the um, on-street parking and updated design strategies. Phases one and two, we're providing those additional off-site areas. We're adding language that helps both the HOA and the city enforce um, the parking restrictions within phases one and two. Um, and then creating the new road connection, um, you know, the, between Learning Lane and Fernanda Boulevard to improve uh, that circulation. That also has parallel parking along that roadway. And then um, again, we've designed phase three with a larger right of way so that we can, from the very beginning, uh, plan for uh, the larger um, road right of way and on street parking. <laughs> so with that, I'll uh, pause here and see if uh, you have a question or two. Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Mr. Watts, how many times has this project been altered, reimagined, redone over two year period, sir? I would guess north of a dozen times. How many? North of a dozen times. How, many, how long has it been coming in front of us to try to get approved? Uh, this is the second time we've been here as a first reading. How many years has this project been going on is what I'm asking. Two years. Two years. And PNZ said no twice. Yeah, PNZ has recommended uh, denial on it. Um, and obviously we think that with the combination of both continuing the same lot pattern and the same development pattern that you have there, uh, and the additional improvements that we're providing for both the, the, the community as a whole and the road network and uh, the existing phases one and two, we think that, you know, that supports uh, the rezoning. Now, I will point out one of the things that's been interesting to look at is, you know, your existing zoning here is agricultural. Um, that was there, you know, if you look at your zoning code and you look at the purpose and intent behind the agricultural zoning classification, um, you know, the ag zoning um, is really there to be used in five circumstances under your, what your code provides. One is to preserve and protect small farms. And I think what you had there previously with the nurseries probably falls under that classification. Um, two is to provide transitional agricultural production. This area isn't providing. This is an area that you've planned for, for really urban and suburban uh, development. Three is to provide transitional agricultural zones between more intensive agricultural uses and residential areas. Again, that's not the, the instance that you see here. Four is to apply to properties um, which are undeveloped or in agricultural use which lie between undeveloped or agricultural areas and developed areas that are designated for non-agricultural uses. Again, that circumstance is not what you see here. Um, so if you look under the conditions that you've got in your zoning regulations and you look at what you've planned for with your comprehensive plan here, you've got a suburban residential, low density residential land use classification and then you've got an agricultural classification that was really in place based on the historic use of the property. If you look through what this ag, the ag classification now permits, you know, animal husbandry, apiaries, chicken farms, hobby breeders, fish, excuse me, fish farms, I don't think any of us can see those uses fitting in the context of where this property is anymore. But the interesting thing is those uses are also now inconsistent with the comprehensive plan. So even though you have agricultural zoning, the list of uses that are permitted there aren't consistent with, with the low density residential classification. So we have to do something here. And uh, again, what we think what we, we presented is a reasonable alternative and a reasonable approach to the development of the property. Welcome to my world, Mr. Watts. I agree with you. Our con comprehensive plan does not agree with our comprehensive plan. So that, uh, there was a reason that I asked that question. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Burbank. There, there we go. Uh, in the PowerPoint presentation, you mentioned a phrase in retrofits to existing phases one and two. And in the bullet points, it says adding Wall Street parking areas and HOE, HOA, Homeowner Association, city enforcement rights. Um, uh, could you explain what that means? Sure. City enforcement rights? Because you did mention city enforcement in your presentation just now. I did. And, so, oh, thank you. And um, I don't know if that means that you're, uh, did the city would be expected, or in this case the sheriff's department, would be expected to step up their enforcement of parking this in the street that shouldn't be there in the first place? So. Basically, as we worked through that issue with staff, again, we, we heard a lot of com concerns from the existing residents of those phases and your staff about the on-street parking. And your, your emergency services were, the, were kind of the, the ones saying that the loudest, that hmm. we can't get apparatus through there because of the on-street parking issues in phases one and two. And so what we don't have right now and what we added to the, the proposed PD amendment is stronger enforcement ability that is required by statute for the HOA to be able to you know, strongly enforce the parking restrictions, but also that provides the city with the right to do that. So if it's a public safety issue, you now have the right, the HOA now has the right and the ability to go in and enforce the parking restriction on one side of the street. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Now you say we have the right and what I'm hearing is it's a liability to the city. Um, uh, 
Oh, I'm assuming that though, at some point in time, once again in the future, somebody will go through the recorded documents, things like covenants and restrictions, mm -hmm. and articles of incorporation to provide the HOA with more enforcement rights. That's correct, and so we, as part of this, we would be including um, the enforcement rights and the, and the enforcement powers within the HOA documents within the PUD as well. So we're trying to go back and make sure that everybody has the ability to enforce that to create a safer condition. Yeah. Now, that a, a lot of those terms that we've included here were things that came at the request of staff and your safety, uh, your public safety staff. At present, there truly is no HOA, it's just a developer right now. The, with the thinking that when it's complete, he'll turn it over to a resident. There are, there are uh, I think, one or two resident uh, representatives on the board now. That, that transition process has begun in that regard. Okay. And, and they're on board with going back and retrofitting, to use your term again. It'll have the to articles, go through that. The original articles of incorporation and the original covenants and restrictions it, to provide more robust language regarding parking enforcement. Yeah, that, that's what we would have to, we would be required to do from here, correct. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you. Commissioner Jody Lee. Uh, Mr. Watts, is there anything that has changed on this besides an on-street parking area by the pool, the amenity pool that has changed since it came back to the Planning and Zoning Board last? Uh, this is the same plan that was presented to the Planning and Zoning Board. We did have the additional input and the results of the survey with regard to what goes into the additional amenity areas. Uh, you just mentioned a comment, there's already, you said there's already HOA people on a board. Do any of the HOA people that live in that community have any control of what takes place in that, place in that community as of right now? Uh, I believe at this point in time, the HOA, the covenants are still subject to amendment by the declarant, which is the original department. So right now they're in control and HOA Correct. people that live there have no control over what takes place. That's just following the, the terms of those, those covenants. Correct. Okay. That's it for now. All right, I actually have a question as well. Yes, sir. So I'll let Commissioner Avila Vasquez go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a question um, tied to the other question that I wrote, that I asked before. Is there any other area in this development that another road can be created to enter and exit? Because my problem is, one way in and one way out. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, that is very dangerous mm -hmm. um, for, for me to uh, go with something like this, knowing that if, God forbid, something happens, you have in phase one and phase two, 502 residents, and I don't know how many more residents will be in phase three, mm -hmm. all stuck in this area to get out. Um, and then you have the um, Osteen Cemetery Road that if one car is coming in, another car can't go out. So right. I'm just, that's my concern right now. Sure. And, and you know, really the intent with creating the connection points between Clarion, Learning Lane, and Fernanda Boulevard is intended to, to begin creating those additional connection points. Now, you also have this land in here, which is privately owned and will develop at some point in time, so there's the potential for additional connection points coming through here. Um, we've got the connectivity that we've planned for to the south. The issue with Osteen Cemetery Road is the nature of the right-of-way. So you have a very narrow roadway. Um, we don't control the sides of it, so we can't acquire the additional right-of-way that would be necessary to expand that to be a full public roadway. And in fact, we've a been asked through the process to specifically leave Osteen Cemetery Road untouched with regard to the access. And that was something that came from the, the cemetery um, you know, board um, that they didn't want, they wanted to restrict access there. So. With phases one and two, your public safety uh, staff and everybody else did approve um, Osteen Cemetery Road as an acceptable emergency access point. And in fact, the existing emergency access for phases one and two is up in this area here. So that connection is already there and that's how those phases were served with that. And so what we've basically done is connected that here and brought that and made that a shorter run. We introduced Tina Lee, she has something to add. Hi, Tina Lee with Starlight Homes, 1064 um, Greenwood Boulevard, Lake Mary. The um, connection, there, what isn't being said is at the current amenity center, um, I think it's Patron, 
already is a public right of way that connects into New York Avenue that will be constructed as part of phase three that connects out to Learning Lane. So you'll have two entries into the subdivision once the connection between Fernanda Drive and the school is put in. What? That's correct, and that's the one I allude to up in this area here. So you've got a connection point there and then the one here. Can you explain that to me again? I just, I just. There's an existing roadway that it's Patron uh, Street that comes down here and currently kind of dead ends into that unopened public right of way. And so when this roadway is constructed, you have a connection point there and you also have a connection point here for the whole neighborhood. You have two connection points to those, th those public roads. And then we've planned for the future connectivity to other uh, points as well. And that connecting road is, is, does it go through the community or is it outside of the community? Outside of the community. So it provides a connection outside of the community and also that connects, again, so you'll have a public road connection on Clarion, Learning Lane, <laughs> connects down to the roadway here and connects to Fernanda Boulevard and then Fernanda Boulevard and the extension of Patron are the two access points for the overall neighborhood onto that new public roadway. And it connects to Fernando Boulevard outside of the community, or do you Correct. still have to travel through the community to get to Howland? No, in fact, that was one of the original, the original concept had the connection coming through the neighborhood. And in order to avoid the potential cut through for the school traffic, we were asked to, to obtain the right of way for uh, New York Avenue, which is the existing right of way that we've added onto on the west side of the property. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Watts. I'm gonna go through the final round of questioning from the commission up here. We have Commissioner Burbank, then Commissioner Jody Lee, then uh, Vice Mayor Bradford, and I will take the last question. So, Commissioner Burbank. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Watts, did you say that your engineer is here? Could I speak with him, please, or her? Josh? Yeah, bring up, Thank uh, you. Josh Edmondson with uh, Poulos and Bennett. Yes, sir, Mr. Commissioner. Good evening, sir. Um, this project shows a large drainage retention pond in the middle of it, mm -hmm. correct? These, design, these are designed pretty much based on science. You know how much water you're gonna have to collect based on impervious surfaces. You're gonna have to train that water to go where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. And so there are assumptions made about how much impervious surface would be involved in that, correct? Correct. And it, we're, too, we're, we're not far enough along right now to you have actually performed intricate stormwater calculations to make sure that this thing is feasible as it as it's shown right there. This is just your best guess at this point. Um, we have done prelim calculations. Prelim, okay. um, obviously we have to go through the proper permitting um, and meet local and state stormwater guidelines, which we will do. Um, but we have done pr uh, preliminary calculations for what you see before you. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Watts, in our meeting last week, as we Zoom, he informs me that the phase three is actually going to have a dedicated six foot wide strip of asphalt along the exist along the proposed roadway for off street parking. Do your stormwater calculations take that assumption into it? And do your calculations take into uh, the impervious surface to be created by the road that's going to be running north and south? Uh, are we, will this thing look like this when it's done, do you think? Correct. So our, our calculations capture all impervious surfaces within the right of way. Right. So all, everything within the right of way is captured and that pond is sized not only for the individual lots, but for all impervious surface within the right of way. Did that impervious surface, was it, was it 24 feet of asphalt or 30 feet of asphalt? I can't remember now. You're essentially, a, yeah. you're essentially, at, the project is essentially adding a half of a roadway lane the entire length of the project. Correct, we have a we have a 50 foot right of way. Correct. Uh, with the well, six I'm, foot, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, too, but, but I was told in the meeting it was gonna be 52 feet. Two. It's 52, that's correct. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so you have a 52 foot right of way that was originally proposed for 24 feet of asphalt, two feet of curb on each side. Correct. And now you got 24 feet of asphalt, two feet of curb, and then another six feet of asphalt on one side, which is essentially a half a lane of traffic. Correct. And we can was that part of your assumptions when you did the layout for that pond right there? Correct. It was, well that's a yes or no question. That is correct, yes sir. Okay, it was. It was, yes sir. Okay, thank you, mm -hmm. answers that. Thank you, Mr. Watt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, that's all Thank I you, have. Commissioner Burbank. Uh, Commissioner Jody Lee. 
Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Watts, so you're talking about another entrance coming where the amenity pond or the amenity pool is right now. There's gonna be another entrance or an exit leaving to that street. You're referring to out. this area? Uh, no, the other corner. Yes. Right there, you said there's gonna be an exit. So there's there's an existing patron that comes down here uh, well, along the existing amenity, uh, pool amenity. Right. And so that dead ends currently because there's not a road connection. Right. So the new road connection will, will allow that to connect in. Just out of curiosity, and this might be small tighter, but mm -hmm. that person that owns that corner house, did you tell them that they were gonna put a street right there when they bought a house right there? It's a dedicated public right of way next to them and there's a dedicated uh, public right of way behind it. Grass kind of right there, I was there earlier today. Yep. So. Uh, and to answer to the other question, there's still only one main entrance in and out of phase three, except for the emergency Osteen Cemetery Road. So everybody's gonna be coming in and out one road, and that's it. That's correct. The okay. connection would be to uh, the existing road network in phases one and two. I'll reserve the rest of it until after the public makes their comments about it. Vice Mayor Bradford. And I'm not sure if you can answer this or Ron may need to answer this. When I'm looking at this map, what it reminds me of is Arbor Ridge and Arbor Woods and how Lob Lally goes through. Ron, is that what this is similar to? Basically the road, the drive going back? Do you know what I'm talking of? How Lob Lally goes through Arbor Woods back to Arbor Ridge and has like the main entrance out onto Howland. Yeah, Arbor, the... Arbor Ridge, yeah, Arbor the, Ridge, because Timmercrest is down at the other end, but this would kinda... Is yeah, isn't there, there's three outlet potentials for that, one being Rose Apple, Forest Edge, and, no, and uh, Lob Lolly, correct? No, um, Rose Apple I don't think goes all the way back to Arbor Ridge. Yeah, I'm, I'm operating on memory. Yeah, so anyway, so that's what I was trying to figure out. So we, we've increased the size of the road. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is it the same size basically as a standard road? Yes. Okay, that's that's kind of what I wanted to see is yes, that it was the, land development the same code. going yeah. through for that through traffic to be able to sustain the traffic. Yes, it, it, we're not seeking any reduction to your to your typical right of way. In fact, the only thing we're doing is increasing the right of way right. areas. I'm just trying to give myself a visual as well. Sure. So, yeah. Thank you. So I, I have a question as well, Mr. Watts. Yes. Sir. Um, currently, after phase two, was there any conversations about putting together a, a HOA that's kind of managed by the residents of the of the the current area? Uh, well, the, the HOA will transition to the residents of the, the consolidated neighborhood. Specifically, one of the things that we were asked to do with working through with your staff was keep it all within one HOA and keep all the amenities accessible to the entire consolidated phases one, two, and three. And so we've made, made sure that that was the condition moving forward. Um, with regard to the existing HOA and the turnover, um, I'll ask Tina to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the turnover occurs when there's, you get to the point of 90% um, you know, of the ownership sold and the additional phase three property was identified as an additional area for a uh, few additional lots to be included and so that 90% has not yet been reached. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, if you already have phase one and two that have been approved, and what, what is what is the capacity of that right now? What what percentage are you there with phase two being complete? Uh, we, we've I think 246 out of the 251 uh, so you're lots are over 90 percent. That's correct. correct. But so again, what, phase three has been identified as the expansion area. I, and I understand that. But what is stopping uh, you guys from doing the turnover now? I mean, why why put the residents? through a hassle of having to wait. I mean, because look, at the end of the day, it, it might be approved, right? But we yep. don't know that yet. So why not give the residents the benefit of the doubt and show them a little bit of, of, of trust between both, sure. you know, the developer and the residents, because they've already bought, they've already, they're already invested in totally those understand. communities. Yeah. What, what is stopping, because when I'm looking at it, when I've spoken to, mm -hmm. to the one or two residents, you know, they, they tell me, well, it was supposed to happen with a turnover and all of a sudden 
st phase three comes up and all of a sudden we're no longer at the 90% capacity. Right. So then we lose the right to have the HOA and pretty much the right to have a say in the matter. Yeah. That, that is I, the big concern that I have. Yeah, and, and I certainly understand where you're coming from with that and where the residents are coming from with that. I think what everybody is doing is operating within the, the you know, the, the terms of the documents that exist as they exist right now. And so that includes not only the 90% turnover point, but also that ability to identify the additional area to be brought in. And that does affect that that term. Now, that term has been in place since those, those covenants were initially recorded. So everybody has taken title based on those terms being there. I think that from speaking with, with our client, they're, they're more than happy to continue working and, and working to, to work into that transition so that the residents have control over the neighborhood as we begin moving forward with the phase three. But that wouldn't happen unless it's after phase three. Well, right now the, the, the term in the documents is 90%. Um, and so, again, that's that's the term that's been there from, from the very beginning. Um, and I think the ability to annex that additional property has been there from the very beginning. So there's not been a change in those terms. Um, everybody, I think, from the development side is working in accordance with the terms of the documents as they've been in place since the very beginning. Thank you, Mr. Watts. Uh, clerk, at this time, can I call on anyone that has standing? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I can just reserve a couple minutes to, to rebut to any, any points that are raised or answer any other questions that come up. I apologize. Jesus Martinez? Jesus Martinez? Jose? Jose? Yeah. And then Jonathan Medina. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here. My name is Jose Tavera and I live on Fernando Drive. Uh, I want to start first by thanking uh, Commissioner Thomas Burbank by coming out here and uh, to the community and actually talking to me. I was the guy with the fertilizer. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to thank him because uh, that shows that he's actually I voted for him and he actually, you know, is showing interest in what's going on. Um, my main concern is everyone's going to be using Fernando Drive. That's the street I currently live. I actually live where they uh, plan to connect phase three to. Um, I already have issues with people parking on the side of the road. It's not a, a wide enough road. They're gonna make phase three wider, but phase one and two is gonna be still small. So the, we're still gonna have, and they're planning on putting a street light in the, at the end of Fernanda. That's gonna create a bottleneck with another street light that we have by the Pine Ridge uh, High School. So it, it's just gonna be a mess. I feel like and it hasn't be it hasn't been well thought out. Um, we already have 240, 251 homes in the subdivision, plus adding 145. That's 391 families going through Fernando Drive. So pretty much going through the front of my house every single day. I have to. I I work in uh, Orlando at UCF, so I have to travel. So I will have to when leave my house at what. I go in at nine, so I will have to leave at seven in order to get out of my subdivision on time in order to be in Orlando by nine o'clock. It's just, uh, I feel like we're not being considerate to us, to the people in phase one and phase two. We're just kind of just, this is what needs to happen and that's kind of what needs to happen. Um, I, ha I had an idea to kind of use uh, Cemetery Road. I don't know if it could be widened um, to use as a secondary entrance and just make a right on um, on Trade Street and that way you could hit Holland uh, Boulevard. I don't, um, that was something that the Commissioner Vasquez uh, suggested, but I don't know if it could be done. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much some of my talking points. I also wanted to add that they're fixing to put a dog park in there. I feel like a dog park might be something that we may not want from phase one and phase two, but it's not being considered. Um, I was never told about uh, this election they had to figure out what amenities we should put. Um, I was never asked. I mean, I've been trying to be involved more in my community, but. I didn't know nothing about this. Um, 
yeah, and that's just, I want you guys to, before you guys make a decision, to please take into consideration people from phase one and phase two, and you know, I, especially me that I live on that street right when it comes out. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Jonathan Medina, please. Hi, good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is John Medina, and uh, I do not bring 100K uh, for the city with me, uh, but I come as a resident for, uh, from Fernanda with a few concerns. Uh, for the record, uh, I never got a survey about parking of any of, of, of any kind uh, from the developer, and I don't know anyone that got it from the community. So I don't, I don't, I never saw that survey. Um, I've lived in the neighborhood for almost two years, uh, since uh, spring of 2021. Um, the access, um, the construction uh, traffic and the access when phase one and phase two, I live right at Fernanda Drive, um, was a mess. Um, and it was problematic for the residents because of trucks and trucks going in and out with, with uh, shingles and stuff like that in big orders. Um, just stopping right in front of houses and you know, uh, stopping just midway. People that have to go in and out for hospitals, you know, medical appointments, uh, school and all that. Um, um, this, this new construction, I have the, uh, a note here. If you see the, the construction of the learning lane, um, that will put um, in grave danger the students at Pride Elementary that walk out of the school um, because you know how erratic the traffic is on Howland Road and putting that entrance there for people that are picking up their kids is really problematic and you guys should consider that. Um, the size of our roads are too small, like everybody has been telling, has been saying, um, and, and like uh, Jesus, uh, Jose, said, um, I can just, I can only imagine the traffic funnel uh, for that traffic signal that's going to be, be built there. Um, also for security purposes with just one entrance, like uh, Commissioner Avila Vasquez was saying, um, there was a wave of car breaks in, um, in the neighborhood and a free trespassers uh, to our pool, to our current pool. So we can just imagine like the amount of, you know, crime rate that is gonna go up with those uh, new amenities over there, the new pool and the, you know, the dog park. Um, that puts a huge liability, you know, on our on our backs as a community to have people trespassing our pools. Um, and the uh, and as Mr. Paradise said, um, it will be just too dense uh, for our construction. And I would like to to add one word to that, and it will be inconvenient for us residents. That we all. Mayor, that ends people with standing. Do we have any evidence presenters? None that was given to me, Mayor. Sorry? No, no. Okay, are there any questions from the commissioners? Excuse me, I have a question. I'm on the board, do, not, do I not have standing? Absolutely, did you fill out a... The withstanding goes by who received letters and uh, and I was told as a member of the HOA board, I have standing. And your name, please? Jennifer Sutton, S U T T O N. And I did fill out a slip. Um, you, I apologize, but you do not have one here that you are on the board. I am on the board. Okay, ma'am. Right, Mayor, how would you like to proceed? We're, we'll, we'll, I'll take your, I'll take your comments at the public participation part. Okay. Are there any? Are there any questions on behalf of the commission? Okay, we'll go ahead and go to public forum at this time. It's gonna be Larry French, then John Staler, then Jennifer Sutton, then Larry. Okay, he filled out a couple. Okay, then Richard Bellick, then Judith Castronelli. Larry French, please. I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Mr. Mayor, I apologize. I just really want that cleared up, the standing portion cleared up, because as we are in quasi-judicial, right, 
the testimony that we hear from someone with standing is what we have to take into consideration. If a board member is considered somewhat of standing, then I need to consider that person's testimony. So I need that cleared up by legal because I can't, although I can listen to someone in general public, I can't take that as testimony. And I believe that someone as board standing that has standing, I need to hear that compelling true evidence. That is part of my evidence. So I need to understand that from legal. So yeah, well, I'll, I'll, allow, I'll allow legal to answer, but in the future. Commissioner, you certainly should hear it, but I can't uh, necessarily comment on whether it's compelling or accurate. Uh, that would be a decision for you to make. We're told that it's substantive evidence if the, if, if. Yes, you, and you hear it, and you have the right to hear it, and they have the right to, to uh, provide it. I just can't comment on the accuracy. But what I'm asking I you. I don't know. What I'm asking you legally, I'm not asking you to speak to the, the substantive part of it. I'm asking if the board member has standing and that I can hear their testimony as substantive evidence. As as opposed to listening to someone from general public. I can't take that into consideration when making a quasi-judicial decision, so I'm asking for clarity and, on and that. Commissioner, when you say board, are you referring to the planning board? No, I am talking about Ms. Sutton, who is a member of the board and was told that she had standing, that she had legal standing. I'm trying to have that cleared and, up. And is this, which board are we talking the about? The HOA. The uh, HOA board. Right. Yes, she does have standing, and yes, you can hear from her. So then I need to hear from her first as hearing evidence before I hear from general public. That's what I, point I was trying to make. Thank you. Ms. Sutton. Jennifer Sutton, please. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Sutton, secretary and treasurer of the HOA. John Stelzer and I are the original owners of 1028 Landing Lane, located at lot one, right across from the Amenity Center located Landing and Patron. Um, in a recent Zoom meeting, Starlight stated this construction was going to happen whether we wanted it or not. They also stated they had already sold several lots to another developer. That was in a recent Zoom meeting. Um, there were some questions about how the HOA is currently managed and run. Um, as of October, Ms. Sun, give me a minute. Can somebody please fix her mic? And please stop the time as well. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, as of October 2022 financial report, the HOA is running at a deficit of over $29,000 year to date. Um, when it is turned over, if it's turned over to us, it would be a mess. Ashton Woods called a Zoom meeting through Melrose Property Management for October 18th, 2022. Per the HOA bylaws, they were unable to call a meeting using Melrose. They no longer have anyone from their company as a declarant as the VP or president as uh, they had before. Starlight arbitrarily made the change and did not notify any of the residents or myself that they were no longer part of the executive board. Um, to help alleviate some of the parking, uh, the community has asked for sheds in the backyards to help take the storage out of the garages. Melrose and uh, Starlight Homes stated they were n that we were not allowed to make changes to the bylaws until we could take over the HOA. We were told we could start managing the HOA when phases one, two, and three reached 90%. Originally, phase three was 33 homes surrounding the amenity ponds, not 140. The additional parking lots that they're referring to would increase our um, HOA fees because we are responsible for any upkeep on the uh, parking lots, any lighting that is going on there. With the increase of um, break-ins in the cars in the neighborhood, people are not going to want to park their cars a half a mile away where they cannot keep an eye on them. Um, dog parks. Bad idea. I've done a lot of research um, with different um, 
insurance companies, and that right there will escalate any kind of liability insurance, and that would be passed on to the HOA. Because of where we live, this proposed New York Avenue, I am not a fan of. If when John and I bought our home in March of 2020, we were told there was not going to be any development behind us. It was considered conservation area due to the animals living there. We have seen deer, we have a couple gopher turtles. Um, we were happy with our choice. Fast forward a year and they were talking of not only adding an additional 140 homes, but also adding the street behind Landing Lane. That is unacceptable. Traffic is already chaotic when school lets out. If you add that lane and people need to turn left to go back up Howland, they are not gonna go through the school to turn left. They are gonna come through Landing Lane, back up Fernanda to get to the light to turn left. So that little road is gonna create even more traffic going through the neighborhood. Um, and my final point, well, there's two final points, I got 20 seconds. Um, it's also, I received a copy of the report from Volusia County and adding those additional homes would put the capacity of the schools to 120% over capacity. And on a final thought, um, they bought the property as is, and they are now trying to use that as a pawn. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, French, Simon. please. Uh, Larry French, uh, 2520 Harrison Street here in Deltona. I've been a resident here for over 40 years. Uh, I wanna thank you all in advance for the opportunity to let residents be able to speak about issues as, such as this, even though we are not designated as some of the former speakers. Um, I do wanna thank you also in addition for the extra time that was allotted for an agenda, which normally would not be provided to us until the Friday before a meeting on a Monday. Um, this extra time allowed me to look at the documentation that is all part of this, which normally residents don't get a chance to see in detail. I wanted to point out that the packet provided us is lacking three important documents that were in the original post Posting on the website. Uh, one of those was a, uh, I'll call it FUCUS map. It's referred to, it's an acronym for Florida Land Use and Cover Classification System. There was also the lacking of a soils map, which was also originally. And then there was a FEMA flood map, which I thought would have been extremely important since we've been having lots of issues with water. <clears throat> Okay, the reason I wanted to speak on this is, for instance, um, these types of classifications, the Florida land use and cover classification system, it's land that was agriculturally classified. Yes, that's right. And as Mr. Watts is saying, a lot of our classifications don't seem to fit in the comprehensive plan today. Well, that's because we haven't been sticking to the comprehensive plan. We keep making amendments and ordinance variations, so we have completely screwed up our comprehensive plan, so the moratorium that we have is something that we should be utilizing to really closely look at our land use and development. The information that's provided in here, in 2007, we were designated a tree city. That would make me think that just the instance of having some historic trees on this property would warrant any kind of planning possible to work roads or other structures around to save those trees. Oak trees in Deltona are really rare. Uh, we are mostly a pine tree community, so whenever you have oaks, those are some of your most climax community types of plants. Uh, and with some of the flooding we have in our lakes right now, we're losing a lot of those because they're drowning. What we're talking about, a lot of the animals somebody mentioned in there, this map, which we don't have access to on here, designates a lot of these lands that are home to deer, fox, quail, fox squirrels, indigo snakes, and gopher tortoises, and a host of other indigenous animal species and plant species. And the soils maps tell us about the types of permeability of these soils. Uh, the one thing that I was really surprised about was the FEMA flood map wasn't included. There are sections on your map, sorry I hit your button, uh, that show where the water is supposed to go and there was a contours map too. Uh, in a lot of our developments, we completely alter the landscape. 
We redirect the water flow, which creates lots of problems in years to come. And what we need to do is we need to look closely at these kinds of reports and these maps and realize what kind of alterations and impacts we're gonna end up with a few years to come. Not more than less than 20 years ago, we had extreme flooding that we had to put in all kinds of retention areas and pumps to maintain. And now it looks like we have additional areas like this. And your zoning board has already turned this down twice. They were probably looking at lots of things like some of these factors. So in closing, I would like to say, um, if it walks like a duck, if it looks like a Thank duck, you, if it quacks- John Staler, John Staler, please. Good evening, folks. Uh, John Stalzer, I live at uh, 1028 Landing Lane. Uh, everything pretty much was said already. Uh, we're kind of beating a dead horse. We beat this thing around for two years now. Uh, the first time it went to zoning, it was shot down five to two. So they went back and made all these improvements to come back and get shot down by six to one. So the improvements, I don't see, I don't see those really working out. Um, I've been to every meeting. I've been to all the online meetings, all the virtual meetings. Um, and there's not one single person that I've met that's in favor of this expansion, nor one single person that I've met that had a survey given to them. I certainly wasn't one of them. Um, I'm talking about the, the making the roads wider in the new, uh, the new phase for the larger trucks. Those larger trucks are still gonna come through the small entrance to get to the larger road. So that's really not a, 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 plus, a plus mark right there. That's just another Band-Aid. Um, the, the road going behind is gonna cause issues, just like the, we've heard before, they're gonna be driving in and out, taking Fernanda <clears throat> instead of staying out on the major road. Uh, one of the things, uh, everybody that I know and spoken to on Fernanda, when we bought our houses, we were all told that there would never be construction behind us, and that's why we chose the house on the corner, because it's we only have one neighbor, and nothing behind us. Now we're being told we're gonna to have a major intersection and a street behind us, and that's misrepresentation. Um, so you compound all these issues, um, then you have this no strings attached $100,000 gift to the city, which we know goes away if this doesn't get approved. So it doesn't really sound like a gift. That sounds kind of like a, somebody else on the board said a bribe. Um, this expansion is gonna overburden the schools, the roads, the intersections, the internal traffic in the neighborhood. Um, and we're already, I thought we were 25 in the red, 29 in the red when it comes to the HOA being turned over. And that's only in uh, two and a half, three years. So three more years down the road, how far in the red are we gonna be due to mismanagement on, uh, what is it, Melrose? Yeah, Melrose. But anyway, that's all I got to say. Um, everybody else kind of hit on the, all the high points. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Richard Bellick, please. <coughs> Mr. Burbank, can you take your name off the board, please? I think you accidentally touched the thing. And then Ms. Bradford, before she, before Mr. Bellick uh, speaks, would you, do you have a question, I think? No, I'll wait till, um, Perfect. Mr. Bellick. Good evening, Mayor, new commissioners. I think your mic is off. Can you hear me? I think when uh, Starlight said it was going to go in way the, one way or the other, I th think that maybe they had and didn't realize Heidi would lose the election and Ramos would still be here, and then Anita Br Bradford and Vasquez, it would go back right to the 4-3 thing. You know, it's approved 4-3. This project shouldn't be approved. And as far as Mr. Paradise goes, is there a rainbow at the end of the, the, uh, this, a pot of gold? I mean, it's, it's the same story for years. You paint the picture. You sound like his brother-in-law. <laughs> I mean, this has got to stop. You got to look at this guy. This is this is getting crazy now. I mean, everything about this, he defends. He ain't defending these people out here. He's defending the lawyer and the, and, and, and the guy selling the property. I mean, again, I don't even know these people, but this has to stop. You got to look at this guy. I mean, you, you said it's going to be a fresh start. Let's start. Let's let's get it started. Tell him, he can't keep doing this. He's got a paintbrush. Oh, there's nothing wrong. Oh, two people drowned there yesterday? Oh, that's okay, we'll, 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 uh, we'll give them a raft next time. I mean, come on, this is crazy. And as far as the city attorney goes, he never got an answer. 
This is what you hear from him. Back and forth about what board. He should know what board. I mean, with his salary, let's look at it now. Come on. Let's get some answers here. You say he's a stand-up guy. You're a stand-up guy. You're a stand-up guy. He's a stand And we know Dana McCool's a stand-up guy, whether you like or not. I happen to like her. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bellick. Judith Castellini. I should have used the whole four minutes to make them listen to me like I had to listen to this. Hi, I live at 3583 Fernanda, so I live in the back. And I agree with everything they said. I'm not gonna repeat about the traffic in the schools, although that will affect me because my grandchildren will be going to school in Deltona. And they're gonna go to an overcrowded school. What I would like to mention is the amenity ponds. Now it seems like if they don't get their own way, they're passing the, the cost back onto the HOA. And I don't think that's right. I didn't sign up for that. I never heard anything about, you know, we're gonna have to fix an amenity pond and block it off and whatever it takes to make it um, meet code. I think Starlight's in on this um, proposal. So they have, they have control of the HOA. They should have finished that before they even started asking for a phase three. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, that closes public comments. Okay, uh, at this time, let's, uh, the applicant's attorney for rebuttal and then we'll take the questions from our commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, and, and I'll try and be very brief on this. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the very beginning, we've spent two years, and, and in the course of that time, we've um, had a, a great deal of input from your staff, from the school board staff, from the county staff. What you see in front of you is a reflection of that. Now, a lot of what I think you heard are concerns with some of the existing conditions. Those are all the things that if you look at the detail of what we've proposed and what we've talked about tonight, those are the things we're working to try and fix. We're working with your staff and everybody else to try and fix those issues. Um, with regard to, um, you know, the, the things like dog parks or, or whether we have a second pool or things of that nature. Again, we're very happy to work with uh, the residents and the existing neighborhood to determine what they want. Almost every new project we work on has a dog park. They've become very popular. If that's not something wanted in this community, we're certainly happy to work with them to program that amenity area in a different way. The key was maintaining it so that we preserve the trees that were in that area. And so the dog park is something that made sense. Um, the one comment uh, I think uh, the second speaker uh, raised was with regard to um, you know the uh, question of the the um, connection up at the school and the safety of that. That's actually one of the things that we worked through with the school staff um, was designing a pedestrian corridor to go along the western side of that roadway to connect up to where their existing crossing guard location is. They've specifically told us how they want to design that. That design does have to come back, you know, obviously and go through the preliminary plat process. And so that's why we haven't specifically designed that yet because we have to determine whether or not the zoning gets approved. So that we can move forward in the design uh, side of things. A um, couple of other comments. The um, uh, Ms. Sutton's comments regarding you know, our, our discussion of construction happening no matter what. Um, the property currently has rights. Um, it's been purchased by someone. Uh, there's going to be development there. I, I said that at the outset. That's the simple comment that we've made. It's not going to continue to be a nursery. It's going to move forward and develop. Now, whether that's you know, one acre lots under the existing zoning or whether it's, you know, something else permitted under the existing agricultural zoning um, or moving forward with a, a, a residential development as we've, we've proposed, um, it's going to move forward with development. That right is there now. You know, a preliminary plat application can be filed tomorrow for that property under that existing zoning if that's what the choice was. Um, with regard to things like the HOA management, again, all of that is being conducted under the existing terms of the, the covenants and restrictions as they've been in place. There's not been any 
uh, you know, underhanded or, or uh, anything that uh, conducted by the developer or the management company um, that is contrary to what the existing documents provided. Um, everybody has operated in good faith based on what those documents provide currently. Um, now, there are a couple questions with regard to things like sheds, you know, not being allowed in phases one and two. Those are specific conditions that are in the existing PD that were at the request of city staff when that was approved. Um, so those are really things that are sort of outside of, you know, the, the, the topics that have been broached in our conversations with staff over the past two years. Um, but again, that's a condition that's restricted in the existing PD. Um, let me mention briefly New York Avenue and the nature um, of the area behind the, the row of lots um, you know, that I think Ms. Sutton alluded to as well. There is a, a, a preservation, tree preservation you know, buffer area behind all of those lots. That's part of the Fernanda Platte. Um, that's, that was platted in the very first phase, of, you know, phase one, so there is that natural area. It does not continue to infinity. Um, on the immediately west of that, there's an existing public roadway. That condition exists today. So it's not a new condition that thank there's, you, sir. yeah, there's not a new condition. So thank you, I appreciate your time and, and uh, we'd look for your support. Thank you, Mr. Watts, uh, Vice Mayor Bradford and then Commissioner McCool. Couple questions. Mr. Watts, under this current RPUD, what is allowed to be built? You just mentioned that, so can you, you went really quick. I know you're trying to get in your four minutes. Under the current RPUD, if this does not go through, our apartments, condos, what, what is able to be built on this property? So right now, the, prop the phase three property doesn't have PUD zoning. What no. the phase three property has currently is agricultural just zoning. Just agriculture, okay. So, so the things that are listed there, um, Animal hospitals, veterinary clinics, animal husbandry, apiaries, um, aviaries, which would be like bird farms, things of that nature, contractor storage, including equipment um, storage, essential utilities, exempt excavations and landfills, fire stations, granny flats, hobby breeders, home occupations, pisciculture. Um, those are the permitted uses. And then obviously there's uh, riding stables, tailwater recovery, and then there's a, a conditional uses as well. Now. You do have low density residential land use here. And so I think some of those things we would have to work with staff to determine what is consistent um, with the land use classification. That's something you already put in place here. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you can answer this or staff can answer this, but this kind of concerns me. When we are presented with plats, let's say, and we receive a knot that specifically states, you know, no pools, no sheds. Um, are they then allowed, once it's turned over to HOA, to change that? And the reason I have a concern is because if I have small lots and there's a specific reason we're saying no sheds, we're saying that because of the safety of the distance from the house to the shed and if there's a fire. Uh, so, so what you're telling me now is an HOA, we can put that in here and then it can be changed? The PUD establishes a minimum standard. The HOA can be more restrictive than the minimum standard. Okay, so they can be more restricted because they were talking about, you know, removing that they could not have sheds, and that was a little bit concerning to me. So they can make it stricter, but they cannot at this point go backwards and say, oh, yeah, we can have sheds. I mean, because obviously the lot line's a concern for that. Right. They, they cannot, the, the HOA cannot buck the requirements of the PUD. Okay, well, that's how I assumed it was, but when they were talking about, you know, the changing on that, it was a little bit concerning. Yeah, and that was my comment, that, that those restrictions are in the existing PD. Only coming back to you to change that would remove those restrictions. Thank you, Mr. Watts. Commissioner Burbank, do you have any comments? Because you're still on the board. There you go. I'm unfamiliar with the process here. Will I have a chance to discuss this after the comment period? I'll hold my comments till then. Thank you. Commissioner Jody Lee. I want to make a motion. I want to make a motion to deny Ordinance 13-2022 Fernando Place RPUD major amendment to include a new 43.55 acre phase three to the Fernando Place RPUD. Second. 
There's a motion by Commissioner Jody Lee and a second by Commissioner McCool. Do I have to give a reason now too? Can I get, can you please call the roll? Or sorry, can we, Mayor? Go ahead. I'm Mayor, if you're ready to vote, I'll read the title. Please. Ordinance number 13-2022, an ordinance of the city of Deltona, Florida, for a major amendment to the Fernandina Place Residential Plan Unit Development, RPUD, to add and rezone two, two parcels totaling 43.55 acres of land located south of Fernandina Drive and east of Pine Ridge High School. Currently zoned City of Deltona Agricultural Classification A to RPUD, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Clerk, can we vote? J j just as a reminder, Mr. Mayor, can you all uh, please provide your rationale yep. for vote? Yep. Please. Oh. Okay, I'll start with Commissioner Burbank. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I barely know where to start. I thought we were... With a motion to deny, we were done here. Um, uh, On-street parking scares me. We have it out there now, and the kids are stupid. They're gonna run into the street sooner or later and get hit. There are kids out there really think they're dogs already. Uh, the, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's saying, we're gonna do this in the future. If this happens, if we can do this, we can get this approval, this is gonna happen. The uh, uh, way I was raised is you don't go back to the kitchen until you clean your plate. They need to finish what they started. Uh, another thing that troubles me is I don't think you're paying enough respect to George Sauls. George Sauls, you ask who is he? He is the, uh, until the house burned down in the early 70s, he lived in the oldest surviving home in West Volusia County. Uh, he got into Deltona when Deltona became Deltona. And uh, within just a few short years, not only burned his house down, uh, they uh, desecrated his family plot by putting houses and roads on top of it. And then they went to, uh, they lost his headstone. Uh, last I heard, whatever's left of him or memory is left of him is on, in the Osteen Cemetery. I'd like to see that area increased, uh, not just the roadway and the 10 foot buffer. I'd like to see that be much larger as a conservation easement and leave the road alone. Uh, where else do I go? Um, Jeez, the traffic has been brought up. Uh, the connection to Howland Boulevard or wherever it's going to be, if it's at the school entrance, some of the part of the day it'll be okay, but for uh, mornings and evenings when school drops off and school lets out, it will be a nightmare. Traffic will back up forever. What else we got in here? Mm. I reckon that's about enough for now. Thank you, so Commissioner. So that was for a no. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. I'm voting yes for the motion to deny. Commissioner McCool. Yes, I'm voting uh, second in the uh, denial of this project. Number one, based on the FLU element objectives C, D, E, and F. These are available in our comprehensive plan. FLU one, FLU one dash one point two points D, E, I, K, L. I believe it violates the policy of C O N two point W R three point two. Violates objective con Z W R four policy con two. WR 4.2. I have a problem with life and safety issues out there. I have a problem with um, access points. I have a problem with the fact that um, that what I heard the testimony from standing um, and it, just to please uh, Madam Clerk, I do have these written so that if you need to make note, I would be more than happy to turn these over to you so you don't have to go back to uh, reiterate that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McCool. Commissioner Caldwell. I didn't get the question. No. How are you voting and oh, why vote, are you yes. voting that so way? Yes to deny. Uh, I don't believe that there's enough uh, space coming through uh, first phase to access to the third phase. I, after driving through there, I've seen a lot of cars parked on the road. I don't think that's been satisfied. Thank you, Commissioner Caldwell. Commissioner Jody Lee. 
Well, I made a motion. I think there's many things. Emergency services would be a chaos. You know, we keep complaining in the city about everybody wants more money for the fire department, police department, everything else, but we want to keep adding 500 houses here, 1,000 houses here. Guess what? All them costs go up, and everybody keeps on crying when we say yes, or let me say, past commissions say yes to more money. Guess what? You keep putting more people in more houses, them costs go up. But also, just that, that's going to be chaos with the people that live in the area behind there by the cemetery down that one little road. It's not fair to them. You're going to disturb their way of life. It's just, it's not right. And you're going to have all the kids jumping to schools to the fence. That other traffic that goes to the, the school that's there that they want to make that road behind the houses they already sold, that's not right to the people that first moved it in houses. I mean, it's just, there's a whole bunch, there's a whole list of, and then to, to do our teachers and schools wrong with doing overpopulation of the schools? They're the ones that are going to be sitting up here someday. We're not going to be here. And we're going to just keep messing with their schooling and mess with their education by overpopulating the schools. There's already enough problems in the schools. But that's all my, some of my reasons. I got many more, but it's a long night. Thank you, Commissioner Jody Lee. Commissioner Maritza Vasquez. Thank Vasquez. you, Mayor. So I'm going to vote yes um, due to the fact that. My questions that came up with the entrance and the exits of these roads, even though there's another road that's going to be built, both roads will wind up into one that's going to cause a lot of problems um, getting out to Holland Boulevard. So unless something can be made to make a, a resident's life safer uh, during an emergency, um, you know, we can bring it up again, but at this point, I feel very uncomfortable with residents only having one way in and one way out. Thank you, Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Commission Vice Mayor Bradford. This is a tough one. I know you guys have jumped through a lot of hoops to try to accommodate parking, um, widen the roads, and to try to meet the comp plan. The one aspect that we have to look at is the life safety. Um, I will vote yes. At this point. Thank you, Commissioner Bradford. I myself am voting yes to approve the motion to not accept, um, to, to continue with phase three. And here, here are my, some of my concerns. Number one, we have an enormous, and unfortunately they're not here, I wish that would change, but there's an, an enormous amount of residents that do have concerns. I personally walked with a former commissioner that whole district two and a half times. And the amount of complaints that I got from residents and the concerns that I got from residents, from little kids playing outside, the amount of the amount of short space there is right now on those roads, and then adding so many more houses to there. On top of that, we also have to look at the fact that right now we have a 40% deficit in our schools. Even if you were to build another school or, or, or make that school bigger, it doesn't change the fact that there's still a deficit. And adding more homes there with possibility of them having kids, it's not gonna change that fact unless the people that are gonna move there are somehow gonna become teachers. Um, then we have the, the fact that we have only one way to come in and out of that, out of that, uh, or that uh, development. Th there's massive safety concerns. So I, I'm going to vote yes on this as well. Madam Clerk. And the motion passes seven to zero. Okay. This time we're gonna move on to item eight, which is old business. We have none, so we're gonna move to item nine, which is new business, there's also none. At this time we're gonna go ahead and move to public forum. Madam Clerk. All right, Jim Peshka, then Robert Donaldson, then Nick Nully, Richard Bellick, Del Terrorist 007, Jamie Jessup, 
Dell Terrorist, 1776. Jim Pesca, please. Mr. Peshaik, we can't hear you. Pardon me? You're, you're good now. It's on. Okay. And their green light is good. Okay, thanks. A little confused. Congratulations to the new members. Welcome back to the old members. And even our new acting city manager, welcome on board. I want to say thank you all for coming up and doing this job. It's a very hard job. There's a lot of stuff on your plates. We still have debris from a storm that came through here a month ago, and another one two months ago. We still have water issues that the council's gonna have to be dealing with in the city. There's a lot to be taken care of. I'm looking forward to seeing a new view on handling old problems. We have all kinds of things we have to address. We even have that water project down at the lakefront, the straw project. I'd love to see that canned. But other than that, Thank you for all of do, what you do, and the best of luck to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pesha. Robert Donaldson, please. Good evening, my name is Robert Donaldson. I represent Deltona Firefighters Foundation, and I'm just here to give you guys a little update on our small project we have to help the citizens of Deltona. Deltona firefighters have been blessed since 1962 to protect this city and have been entrusted. Over time, we've evolved into an all hazards department, but our members also on their off days treat this not as a job or a career, but as a lifestyle. We have our own foundation, this 501c3, in which we use to benefit the citizens through various measures. The big one I'm here to talk about is what's called Operation Deltona Cares. Operation Deltona Cares is primarily funded through our Fill the Fire Truck event on Black Friday, which went very well. I thank all the commissioners and the mayor that came out to support us and donate. Uh, what we do is we adopt families within the community. We have a very easy way to find them. We encounter them daily, and hopefully with your help, you'll be able to point us in the direction of even more, because you run districts and you know your community the best, and we'll be able to help all those that can. Last year, we were able to help over, I believe, 70 plus families, 500 plus kids, multiple different charities, and we look forward to doing even more this year. So I encourage you to reach out to me, provide me with anyone in your districts that needs help, and we hope to continue helping our city many years into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Nick Nully, please. Hey, good evening. Nick Lully, 3690 Sunday Drive here in Deltona. Uh, first, a big congratulations to um, everyone who has joined the dais and those of you returning. Um, I think elections are, are still a really important part of our society. I think we are so lucky and so blessed to uh, be able to choose our elected officials, no matter if you agree with every single decision or not. Uh, it is still a right and privilege that I encourage everyone to take part in, um, in our society. So uh, for those of you who are new and don't know me yet, uh, communication is is my thing. I'm a local government communications consultant. Uh, before that, I was in a, a television news reporter and anchor. I uh, won some awards for that. It doesn't pay too well, so about six and a half years ago, went into communications consulting. So I do that all day, every day for a very large company, and then at night I come here to the commission and talk more about communications. So uh, very fun. So definitely a passion of mine. Um, certainly that passion often means that there is a, a more critical eye um, that I show onto what we're doing here in Deltona. Um, I I do that out of love because I have invested quite a bit of money in our community um, and it is my goal at the end of the day to uh, make our community better and offer that. So I won't go into my whole life story tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'll follow up with an email. Um, those of you who are returning uh, know that about, I think two months ago, um, I did apply for a role here uh, with our city. Um, I had a meeting scheduled with the city to discuss that. Unfortunately, as I was on my way to that meeting, um, I guess the individual I was supposed to meet with um, uh, was, I later learned, I guess, was suspended. Um, so I certainly have not had an opportunity to have that meeting yet. Um, and it does not look like, I assume, after two months that uh, there will be too much success with that, which it certainly is unfortunate uh, because I do believe I have something great to offer our community. Um, so to that end, while I may not be serving in an official role um, with our city government, um, I'm happy that I'll be supporting um, our new mayor with some initiatives. Um, I'm doing that, honestly, again, after those 40 hours I 
put in at my actual job. That's something that I'm doing just out of the goodness of my heart for our community. Uh, and I appreciate the mayor um, putting his trust in me and giving me that opportunity because I do believe I have something to offer our community, whether that's in a paid capacity or not, um, because I really do love Deltona. So with that, um, I will certainly follow up with an email. And again, I appreciate your time as always. Um, and I'm happy to continue supporting this community as we roll toward 2023. Thanks so much. Thank you. Richard Bellick, please. History was made tonight. Anita Bradford and Vasquez voted no on more housing and more repods. This is the, in over five years, they never voted like this. You guys must have shook them up or something. Now, I seriously, seriously, on, on a, they know, they know they haven't voted no in the five years. They know that. Everything was yes, yes, yes. Four to three, follow the lead. It's got disgusting. But anyway, now let's get back to what I was talking about before. You should seriously look at Mr. Paradise. I mean, this guy's, <laughs> he works for the other people. He don't work for the citizens of Deltona. He gets paid by them, but he don't work for them. The guy paints everything red, everything rosy. Oh, at the end of the rainbow, there's a pot of gold. It's the same story every time. And he has Brad Pitt and Vasquez fall in line with the other two that are gone. And I gotta say it, I hate to be mean, but I think the best thing that ever happened to Deltona was Heidi Herzberg losing the election and Ramos getting out of here. This was a stench on Deltona. You couldn't get no people here. Everybody hated them. Now, to go on, you showed some courage tonight. You, Dana always shows courage. You, Jody, you, you did the right thing. Now, they're not gonna get their way no more. You see how the, how the guy come up here and said, oh, Starlight said they're going in one way or the other? It didn't happen tonight, did it? You know what you're gonna do now? You're gonna arouse the people. You're gonna get the people interested in your government. And then you gotta look for a lawyer to have some answers. I mean, this guy lost every lawsuit. He never won a case. I mean, you talk about Beetle Bailey and Barnum and Bailey, here he is. I mean, this guy takes more money out of Deltona than probably the whole city payroll. I mean, it's got to stop. And you are the guys that can do it, because I think he's got some cannolis. I think he's a stand up, and you will stop this. And your reward's going to be having an audience here. I mean, wouldn't you like to come in and have people, hey, how are you? Hey, good job. Huh? There's one reason why they don't come. Everybody hates him. This guy's like a, he's like a cancer. And then they got to listen to him over there. Oh, every development is good. Everything's good. Oh, they're going to build bridges. They're going to put traffic lights. They're going to build schools. And they never do. They never, never do. It's always a cock and bull story. It's stopping. And people are going to like it. So it's up to you now. I mean, we heard Bradford for five years. Oh, I don't like this low-paying job. Oh, I got my own insurance. I got this. I don't like that. And then she calls the people terrorists. She's the terrorist. Sits up there and pouts. We got to listen to her. Oh, my daughter likes small houses. Oh, my father loved when I brought my husband home. Oh, we got to hear all her stories. She doesn't realize what she's like. She's a monster. Now, you guys, they're dependent on you. Don't you want to look in the mirror and shave and say, I'm a man, I stick up for the people? That's your reward. And Miss McCool, she always does. Regardless of what kind of criticism she gets, she sticks up for the people. Now, I'm urging you, look for a lawyer. Look for, get him out of here. This guy is a root of... Garbage, we'll put it that way, it'll be mild. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Dale Terrace, 007. It's 007. Del Terrorist uh, 007. Uh, reality is, though, we aren't. We aren't terrorists. 
Uh, we're just all individual residents who are fulfilling our duty to be active in our government. And those who are self-serving and stand to be exposed for some of their deeds, they don't like that. So they feel that uh, coming up with, in their little minds, mustering up some made up term would somehow be derogatory to us. Um, but it doesn't deter us any. Um, in fact, we'll wear it proudly. Uh, we'll start calling ourselves Del Terrace. Uh, with that said and out of the way, could we please get a couple updates on the following? Uh, Stacy Cafolo, our deputy city manager. Any word, anything on what's going on there? Uh, could we get an update on the release of the Adams files referenced during the lawsuit discussion? It has been reviewed by our attorney. I saw the billing for it myself, so we've already paid for it to be reviewed. Uh, there's no reason why it's not even online uh, for easy access. Which leads me into needing an update on our public records process and how far have we come on doing the redacting as it comes in and being put online to lessen the need for these extensive fulfillments that we see. It's also been stated by the previous commission that they agreed to hold an open forum providing the residents all the data regarding our collective bargaining agreement. Um, there's also a yearly comparison that Stacey Cafolo had created. I'd also like to see that put online, please. Um, a lot of residents out here would like to see some of this data that we can't seem to get our hands on. We'd also like an update on Elkham Road as well as Catalina and what the plan is moving forward regarding the flooding and the access in those areas. Um, last but not least, uh, where are we on the city manager search? I would expect to see it listed at least once a month on the agenda for discussion needs as well as status updates. And uh, echoing Mr. Bellick, please, for the love of God, let's go ahead and get an RFP, RFQ, whatever you want to call it, and add something to look at our uh, legal. Um, with the last few moments, I had a resident who could not attend a message and ask if I could read for him. Chris, the teacher, Chris Collier, I'm sure you remember. He wanted to say that Ian dropped 16 inches and the water came up vertically 36 to 40 inches. Nicole dropped seven inches, which is half of that, and only came up nine inches. But what they don't know is there's no, mod but they don't know this because there's no monitoring of water on the water gauges. So why was there not catastrophic flooding this time? Because the drain was unplugged and flowing as it should have been. He took video and discovered it takes about nine days for the drain to start flowing at maximum flow rate, which means the drain should have been open nine days previous to Ian. He says he has 12 years plus in lake and wetland management and personally responsible for Victoria Park and all of its lakes. He would be glad to help solve some of these problems, but nobody seems to be reaching out to him other than myself and Mr. Sosa, who returned emails and phone calls while he was commissioner. He states that he does have solutions using liner ponds. If anybody wants to listen, it'd be nice if somebody gave him a call back. In closing, Go back to my statement. I'd like to thank Mayor Avila and Commissioner Burbank for our many meetings, and I encourage all the residents to reach out to their commissioners as well as to the mayor. Have these meetings. Uh, talk to them about your thoughts, your concerns, accolades, requests. Um, uh, you don't have to wait for a public meeting to do so. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie Jessup, please. <clears throat> Hello, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Jamie Jessup from 557 Normac Avenue. I rise tonight to congratulate those of you who have joined the dais and also I rise tonight to thank those of you who return to the dais or remain on the dais. Uh, I think it's very important that we as citizens recognize those of you who are serving our city. And I know that sometimes you get complained a lot about, but I've come tonight to uh, thank you for your service. In that vein, I would like to make a proposal to you that you should form a committee to celebrate and appreciate the service of Heidi Herzberg, who was our former mayor. She served this city for 12 years, and I can tell you I have not always agreed with her, but I think that it is appropriate for us to uh, celebrate and thank our mayors when we have, we have a history of doing that. And so I propose that you, uh, you form a committee. And if you would like me to serve on that committee, I'd volunteer to help you do that. Number two tonight, I'd like to talk to you about a little bit about moving forward as a city. 
I'd like to encourage you to treat each other with respect and the respect that you each deserve because you each were elected to your positions. It's very important that you treat each other with respect because when you are respectful to each other, you're being respectful to the voters that put each of you on that dais. You don't have to always agree, in fact, you probably won't. There'll be times where you might be in the minority. There may be times that you're in the majority. Maybe times like tonight where you're unanimous. You don't have to always agree, but be agreeable. I'd like to just talk about two more things real quick. First off, can we get all these barriers out of here? These screens up there, all this, COVID's over. Let's move on. You guys are safe with each other. Get rid of the barriers. And the last thing I'd like you to do is solicit your assistance. How many of you know about the war zone that is located on 415 as you're going right out? It's on the other side of, it's not in Deltona, it's on, in the county. And there is these tanks and mortars going off. I live right across the street from that. It is a war zone. The county, and I know you don't have jurisdiction to make decisions about that, but you do have the ability to speak up for your citizens. The county is, during this month, considering a rezoning of that property. I would appreciate it if you would reach out and, and on behalf of the citizens. It's not just me, because I live across the street from that war zone, that loud noise, the bombs going off. It really does. It shakes the house. It's not just me, though. It's people all the way to Cortland and Howland are hearing that racket, and it's very disturbing. I'm a property rights guy, and so I may not have agree with everybody here tonight on every, every one of these building projects. I, I like property rights, but we as citizens who live in the city of Deltona deserve not to hear all that racket and to be, have our peace disturbed. So would you please reach out to the county council and tell them how you feel about that subject matter? Thank you very much. Thank you. Del Terry, 1776. Ah, yes, another Dell terrorist. So since um, our esteemed commissioner obviously is too friggin' ignorant to understand the definition, I'll read it to you from Merriam-Webster. A person who uses unlawful violence, especially against civilians, in pursuit of political aims. I don't recall any violence, none whatsoever. I could, words, that's about it. I have to agree with Richard. If anybody, you're the terrorist. We're sitting up there in an elected position and referring to your community in such a manner. And believe me, I think it's time to start digging into the ethics of that, maybe start digging into some of your business practices, start digging in deep. You want us to be terrorists? Fine. We'll, we will go and we will dig and we will find what we need to find because I'm sure there's stuff out there. Now, I do want to congratulate you guys. To, uh, that, I, I was shocked. A 7 to 0 vote on something that actually mattered. Y'all need congratulations for that. I will give you credit every time credit is due. And I'm also going to say that I hope that I'm going to, that we are going to see the same thing because we know that there is going to be a firefighter contract coming up before you guys build before long. And there are far too many of you up there who are owned lock, stock, and barrel by the firefighter union. One in particular, I went and rechecked today, and in three reporting cycles had 76. And I hope the people at home hear this, 76 contributions from firefighters. 74 of them were directly from individual firefighters and two of them were from firefighter packs. And we have another one who had multiple from firefighters and firefighter packs. So it's very obvious to us who owns you. And we want to, you know, prove to us that they don't that you took their money and now you're gonna laugh in their face, that you're not gonna just give them everything they want. You're gonna have to prove otherwise. You did good tonight. 
but you need to keep that up. You need to not let, you know, Deltona end up with, eh, well, you know what, it's just that the people pay the taxes, we don't care. So when everything goes up because of more unfunded liabilities, it's all right, we'll just raise taxes. It's time for you guys to stand up to them. You've already been bought off by them. Now show them that, yeah, we just took your money. Ha ha ha, laugh in their face. But I will say congratulations, and congratulations to uh, you, Santiago, as a new mayor. Looking forward to great things from you. Um, but uh, the, the, you know, I think that we, we definitely have an ethics issue here when we've got a commissioner up here referring to the people who actually pay for all this as terrorists, because we choose to speak out, because you don't like our words. Little snowflake, little snowflake, can't stand words. You know, and you know, that is the big tactic of the extreme left these days. We will label everybody we don't like. You're a phobe, you're a terrorist, you're an ist of this, a racist of this or that. So we can shut you down, so we can cancel you. Maybe you're the one that needs to be canceled. Let's find, let's dig. I'm gonna start recruiting people. We're gonna dig into every resource we can find. And again, we got to see another nap by our esteemed um, legal tonight. We got to see his, his nap a couple of meetings ago, and tonight he had no clue, no clue what was being asked of him. It is a shame. It's gotta end. Thank you. Larry French, then Kathy Bryan, then Albert Bryan, Robert Trimbetta, Adam Vasquez. Larry French, please. Uh, Larry French, uh, 2520 Arsenal Street in Deltona. I just wanted to thank you commissioners for uh, listening to the residents tonight. Um, these kinds of uh, meetings are, are heartwarming and they're actually uh, something that we appreciate. I also want to thank uh, a number of you for already reaching out to residents since you've taken office. I know Mr. Burbank has asked me to come and talk about some of the land use issues and things that I've talked about before to the commission that in past years were just kind of blown off. And even Mr. Paradise and I are going to have a little chat too. But I just wanted to encourage other residents to get involved. A lot of us have been on the sidelines just watching watching on TV and not being here. It is quite a, an awesome thing to get up here and be able to speak and not be able to condense everything into the four minutes, but gosh, folks, imagine some years back, we had even fewer minutes to be able to talk to you folks. And it is kind of awkward and difficult for us when we come up to speak about issues when we don't have the ability to come and rebuff and so forth as Mr. Watts does. One of the things residents need to be aware of is he's a professional, he's doing his best to do exactly what the developer wants him to get done for him. Um, and we need to be just as trained and informed as pro and professional as we can in being able to counter everything that comes up because it's all not about green. Uh, Joni Mitchell in 1970 had a song that kind of reminds me of that, it had the lines, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? They paved paradise and they put in a parking lot. We could have changed that a number of times here in Deltona to be a dollar store, an O'Reilly's, whatever. But um, hopefully we're gonna be seeing some change. I'm hoping that we're gonna get more of a handle on our land use and development practices. A lot of the ways that houses are prepared around here, some of the things in the practices in the past decades have become so processed that we're creating a lot of problems because we eliminate our green areas, we don't have as much permeable surface areas, sod can't hold that much moisture, we have elevations that change that create flooding conditions. There's a lot of things we can do that could possibly alleviate or prevent some of the kinds of issues that we're dealing with now. I've seen a number of places in Deltona that have more water than I can imagine from all the years that I've been here and it's not all just from a 500 year event. I would commend you all also as many times as you can get out like some of you commented 
Go out and see the properties you're gonna be addressing. Walk them, see them. That's one of the things I did a number of years with one of your parks directors. I went around to all the parks properties and saw all the different assets, the plant and the animal communities. And the more informed you are about those areas, the better you are prepared to address these kinds of issues. Um, and continue to listen to your advisory boards. The advisory boards were selected by you to counsel you and give you information to help you in making your decisions. They are your ear to the public when you don't often get out there to see the public and talk to them. Listen to what they recommend and thank you so much for listening to your zoning board this time. These people are great. Um, again, I would just emphasize we need to really look at our growth and planning process now that we have this moratorium. We need to look at ways that we can make our area a much more attractive area so that we can maintain and preserve a lot of the things that brought many of us here in the first place. Thank you very much and good job tonight. Thank you. Kathy Bryan. Good evening, Kathy Bryan, Deltona. Um, I, I seem to be hearing a common theme and it was on my list of things to talk about and, and doc, uh, Pastor Bradley started it with the invocation um, about getting along. Um, I welcome each and every one of you that is up on the dais at the moment. And um, as you're one of your many employers, um, I hope we are all gonna work well together. Um, I hope that you guys can remember to put aside anything that you feel might be like in a personal attack or otherwise, because we're not allowed to do that to you. You guys aren't allowed to do that to us and you shouldn't be allowed to do it to each other. Um, I, I keep hearing that running theme. You're not gonna get along, you're not gonna agree all the time, but you do need to, to get along and not take things personal and take it home with you. Um, I hear a lot of residents who come up and to talk about something, they say, thank you so much for letting me come up and speak. And it's nice, it's courteous, but it's your right. Please come out and speak more. <laughs> um, I do hope to see that we get moving on the new manager process. I hope to be hearing about that very, very soon. Um, I'd also like to propose bringing back the citizens emergency response team. My understanding it was, was um, nixed by Jane Chang. I don't know if that's correct or not. I'm not sure the reasons why, but I would love to see that come back. Especially if you get people in there who are trained and you have to pass whatever test because you don't want just anybody and everybody running around doing it. But if that's a possibility. Um, I love Mr. French's talking about the different things um, that we need to think about when it comes to our development and building. Um, there's nothing wrong with a quiet piece of land. Not everything has to be developed. So thank you guys for actually declining something for once. And while there is property rights, you buy a piece of property, you can never say never, whether you're the homeowner or the developer, but it always seems to side with the developer and almost never the residents, so good job, because I had a lot of concerns about that as well, and I didn't have to come up and speak on them. Um, have a good night, thank you. Thank you. Albert Bryan. Over Brian Deltona. You know, for the past two years, I've come up here and there's been a set of books in the back of the room that I could reference. Hmm, they're not there tonight. So much for transparency in my government. Now let's think about this. We have books and policies for a reason. We should be able to reference them. If I want to get up out of my chair, walk over and pick them up and read them, I should be able to. To remove the books that make our government what it is, is what we consider non-democratic. Now, that being said, I wonder 
because if I remember right, a couple of years ago as well, all the commissioners that were up there at the time voted for a decorum policy. And I think that was violated because somebody called a citizen's terrorist. I think somebody needs to take and look and see if that's a removable process because to me, that's an insult to me. I've been here seven years, blood, sweat, and tears, talking about issues, not people. I've never come up here and said, y'all are morons, you're and or otherwise. I may call myself that, but that's different. It's one thing for me to stand up here and insult myself. It's another thing to be insulted by you, the people who voted for you. I would ask that she steps down from her position because to insult citizens the way you did, as far as I'm concerned, you should never, ever be even in business in my city anymore. The other thing you got to think about is when you take, take a position like that, you represent these people. By insulting the people you represent, what does that get you? Well, I, I, I have to understand, what does that actually get you? And where, where does it get you? Because if I was a person that wanted to talk to you, you would be the last person I ever talked to. Y'all have a good night now. Robert Trombetta, please. <clears throat> Robert, Trim <clears throat> Robert Trimetta from uh, 439 Golden Arm Road, Deltona. Uh, <clears throat> congratulations to everybody that's uh, been elected. Uh, and uh, I campaigned for several of you, and then several couple of you I, well, one of you I didn't campaign for, but congratulations. Uh, that's the way democracy works. That's the way our system works, and it's, uh, I think, still the greatest system on earth. Um, you, it seems like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You guys uh, heard a case uh, from these people over here about what they wanted to build and you decided to vote against it and that's fine and I don't think you did anything that you don't do every other time. You hear the evidence and you vote from where you think you are and people are going to agree and they're going to disagree. And it could be four to two, five to two, seven to nothing. It is what it is. I don't think anybody here is doing this because they're getting wealthy. I mean, that's a joke. You don't make anything. Your car travel, your time, your effort, and you make, make hardly anything for this. It's to, to accuse you people of being $100,000 that are going to housing, which, we, uh, which they need as a bribe. A bribe to who? It's nobody here, nobody there, nobody's getting rich on, on bribes. That's, that, that's, and if you, you know, if people have proof of something, quit spewing it out and just come up with the proof. Simple as that, come prove that people are taking money. But they just call, they say, I never call, they say, I never call people names. That's the, biggest bunch of bunk I've ever heard. I've heard people call people bootlickers. I've heard people accuse people of affairs. Commissioners, they, they said they had affairs from these people back here. They don't, they, and because somebody makes one comment and they're gonna come up and attack after they've attacked, since I've been here, attacked every meeting. There's not a meeting that goes on even when they're happy with the vote, they have to find somebody to attack. That's a sickness. That's crazy. People have responsibilities, legal responsibilities. You can talk all you want, but there are legal reasons why developments have to go on and, develop, and maybe why developments have to stop. But you just can't snap your finger, I don't want it. 
the courts have told, the courts have told, I think, people that bottom line is there has to be legitimate reasons, legal reasons, to stop somebody from doing a development. So keep doing your best, keep voting your hearts. Seven, seven to nothing is no different than five to two or whatever. Vote your hearts, vote what you believe. We're not gonna agree. People that I campaign for, I probably am not gonna agree with all the time. That's democracy. That's what this is all about. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of it. Anita, I don't know if I can talk directly. I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't envy any of you, because if I was sitting up there, I would say a lot worse. So I'm glad I'm not up there, because you guys, you guys have been on there for a while, has showed a lot, a lot of, of restraint. So thank you very much. Adam Vasquez. Good evening. Uh, I wanted to come up and congratulate all of you uh, for being sworn in and the new commission. Um, I don't have a whole lot that I want to cover here tonight other than um, I do agree with the work, Nick, that you're doing and um, and I do agree that we need to bring more of the residents in Deltona together. I think the process works better when more of us come. Um, I was happy to see how, how you guys voted this evening um, uh, on the subdivision. Some of the issues that they were having, if you go back and look at the early days of my subdivision and it being turned over when we were in debt and now 20 years later, some of the issues that we're having with our stormwater, these are issues that if, if it wasn't a statute of limitations thing, we could have went back and perhaps maybe went after the developer if they would have caught it a little earlier on. Um, I do think that it's important for the HOAs and for the um, for the HOAs to maybe organize, especially some of these newer ones that may be getting turned over from developers. Um, I did go ahead and create a Facebook page actually for board members, uh, board members of Deltona, Florida HOAs, if anyone's watching from home uh, that wants to join or please get the word out there. Um, I envision maybe hopefully having like a round table of other HOA board members. Maybe we can talk about issues that impact different communities. Uh, um, I also um, want to hold my commissioner accountable for some of the things, you know, I, last year we talked a lot about my views on development and I think that it's important for the residents of District 3 to have a de facto town square on Facebook, so I created another Facebook group um, called um, Deltona Florida District 3, look it up on Facebook if you're watching from home. We won't censor anything on there, uh, we just ask that you all keep it neighborly, come on, if you live in District 3, join the Facebook page. Um, I look forward, Commissioner, to meeting with you on Wednesday, um, and hopefully we can set up a cadence like we used to have so that some of these issues that are raised on this Facebook page, we can find resolution. So with that, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys have a good night. Thank you. Mayor, that closes public forum. Thank you so much at this time. Are there any, is anybody signed up to have public comments on the consent agenda items? No, Mayor. Thank you. All right, we will go now to the consent agenda items. There's uh, one item on the consent agenda. It's a request approval and award of task authorization for Kimley Horn for the Fisher Wastewater Treatment Facility Improvements Construction Engineering Services in the amount of $68,400. We need a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay, can we? I don't. I can't hear anyone. It's like launching okay, the Commissioner shuttle Burbank is on the floor. I feel like I'm launching the space shuttle. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve. I'll second. So motion by Commissioner Burbank, second by Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Can we vote, please? The motion passes 7-0. Do we need to mention the amount of the approval? It'll be the motion that's in your packet. Yep, okay. Thank you, at this time, uh, commissioners, uh, anyone have anything on the special reports and requests? Yeah, Commissioner McCool. 
Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Um, I wanted to bring up something um, to the commission. I've spoken briefly to city manager about this. With the exit of Commissioner Ramos, uh, I am the alternative, uh, the alternate on the TPO. Uh, we have another meeting here uh, for the TPO, so I'm asking for consensus. Um, we have appointments in January. However, we do not have representation right now at TPO, and with the, you know, what we have coming up on TPO. We need representation for Deltona, so I am asking for direction to move me up to our TPO representative, and in January, we uh, reappoint someone as alternate for the TPO. Um, again, we don't have anyone there except myself, and I want to get feedback from the commission on that. Feedback from Mr. Commissioner uh, Burbank? Thank you. Sorry. Any feedback from any of the other commissioners? Vice Mayor Bradford? Um, you are correct. We need to, you, you have been the alternate. Um, it seems as though as well, Commissioner Burbank has a lot of knowledge on that as mm -hmm. well. Um, I don't know, I believe what she needs is a consensus to as the commission, because right now currently it's, you know, Commissioner Ramos, um, he will be being removed. So we would need a um, consensus to have her move up from alternate to the TPO representing the city, mm -hmm. and then we'll need to designate a alternate. And uh, Honorable Vice Mayor, if I may, um, I have 20 plus years experience in logistics. Uh, I have worked with um, the Economic Development Board in Daytona before, um, have very colloquial um, relationship with, with some members of the TPO already, um, have stayed apprised of what is going on and understand what we need to do as Deltona and have a decent um, and good re relationship working with the city manager on what the priorities are and believe most of the time have a um, fair and decent relationship with the commission. Um, I will tell you that coming up, what we're talking about, and we talked about this as development down at Howland, um, the legislative positions this year have increased for pedestrian safety, uh, which we've talked about extensively. We've talked about trying to garner some funds for us to do uh, maybe the flyover there. So uh, I am apprised and have stayed apprised. So for the commissioners that have not sat with me before and, and understand um, this as well. So do we need to, can we make a motion tonight uh, or would you like to put it on an agenda? I'm sorry, um, I didn't say this, I didn't tell you this. There, the next meeting is Wednesday. That's why I brought it up this evening, so I will tell you that. Okay. Just go ahead and make so a motion. Can we, can we just have consensus on here? Do we need a motion or do we need just? Just make a motion to. Okay, make can somebody make, make a motion? i a motion to um, appoint Dana McCool as our TPO lead. Do we have a second? Second, second by uh, Commissioner Jody Lee. Vote. Can I, uh, everyone in favor say aye? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, seven to zero. Now, do we, can we put on the agenda to have an alternate? Yes. Is that something we can add, please? We can add it the next meeting. Thank you. Is there any other commissioners with any special reports or requests? Commissioner Burbank? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Microphone. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yes, sir. I would uh, like to suggest a uh, topic for the fir our first workshop, if and when we start having workshops again. And the topic I uh, would really like to consider is where we're going to hold our workshops. This room seems to be a bit much. And uh, I previously workshops were held at the conference room upstairs, which is more than sufficient. And I think we could form a more cohesive unit if we were all more intimate with each other like that. That's, or we could just make that decision now if it's up to us. I don't know what the procedure would be. I, I agree. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner Burbank. Uh, Vice Mayor Bradford. Um, 
you know, we may have to have a workshop on it. One of the reasons we stopped having the workshops upstairs COVID. was there's, no, there's a limited capacity and we would have people out in the hallways, yeah. people, there, if there's not enough room when you get, like this group right here would not fit upstairs in that room. Yep. So you have to remember that we have a capacity that we're allowed to do and it's too tight in that room to do it. Um, Point taken, thank you. That's, that, that's why we stopped doing that. Okay, point taken. Thank you very much, Commissioner Redford. Okay, at this time we're gonna go ahead and move to city attorney. Do you have uh, any comments? Nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. City Welcome manager? Welcome aboard. <laughs> city manager, do you have any comments? Just, just briefly to let you know that we are continuing to work on the uh, flooding problems. We still have issues uh, in the system. Uh, we have meetings scheduled with the uh, Water Management District to try to get a better handle on what uh, resources we could gather from them as well as some expertise and you know we continue to move forward in that that area um, secondly the debris removal we're through the first phase of that and we're starting the second phase to try to clean up what's been left a lot uh, there's some uh, there'll be some uh, issue with uh, the construction debris just because of the, the condition of the areas that we're having, having to address those right now. So that's going to lag behind probably what we're doing with everything else. But uh, there is debris and it will be picked up on this second round. Thank you. This time we're going to move to city commissioner comments and we'll start off with Commissioner Caldwell and then work our way down. No comments, Commissioner Jody Lee. I got all kinds. Uh, thanks for everybody being elected, being up here, spending your time, volunteering your time. Whatever you're doing is great. It's going to be fun working together with everybody. For anybody in the audience, if you don't know me, you get to know me. I'm not politically correct, and nobody owns me. The only person I owe anything to is that woman right there, my wife. Nobody in this city owes me. I don't owe anybody nothing. I work for the people in this city. I don't work for this building. I don't work for this commission. I work for the people in this city. That'll never change. If you doubt me, come to the meetings more often, you'll see it. I will support all the people that's up on this bench. I'll support all the people that live in this city. But if anybody don't know me, you'll get to know me because I'm gonna do what's right for us, not for the roof over this building. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. So first of all, I'd like to um, second that. The only one who owns me is God. I report to him first and then my family. Um, and I also want to give a big shout out to the Parks and Recs um, for the turkey giveaway. That It was an awesome event. It was the fastest I've ever seen. And I also want to give a shout out to Cocky Rooster for lending us the uh, truck to keep the turkeys in. Um, I also want to point out that the Parks and Recs is still accepting applications for the parade. And Joyce, were you able to get the cutoff date for that? The cutoff date was the end of the week, but we've gotten, I believe, 13 entries, so they're gonna take them all the way up as long as okay, we can. Okay, so you can still, if you wanna participate in the parade, you can still, um, you know, send it in. The application is online. Um, the parade is December 10th. It's on Saturday and it's on Deltona Boulevard. I also want to give a shout out to the fire department for their toy uh, collection and donations that they did on Friday. It was an awesome event. I want to thank all the residents who stopped by and gave donations, uh, brought up carts full of toys to donate for the cause. Um, let's see what else I have here. Parks and Recs, Cocky Rooster, and uh, Jamie Jessup. Yes, yeah, like, like you said, let's try to change things uh, this new year, right? Uh, I just want to, I don't know if he left, but Jamie, um, if you're here, I'm going to reach out to you about your comments and what's going on in your area. Um, let's see if we can work on something together, uh, Jamie Jessup. Um, and that's it. And I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Thank you, Commissioner Tom Burbank. Yeah, I, I got that, yeah. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'm good. Thank you. Oh. 
Commissioner Dana McCool. <laughs> Um, absolutely, thank you very much. I'd like to um, remind everyone uh, on the dais and whoever is um, qualified, we need to attend our Volusia League of Cities dinner on December 8th. Um, we have a new commission. It'd be fantastic if we show up. Daytona is uh, wanting to take the trophy home, and we need to take this trophy home at least one time, for God's sakes. Um, so if you can come out to that, it will be a sparkly event on December 8th. Um, I also wanted to um, just prompt for the update on the city manager search. Um, ask that of the um, acting city manager right now. I also um, desperately want um, a Lakeshore um, straw project update as well. It, just in the inbox is fine uh, with that. Um, and we also, I want to say that I I don't feel that we're making progress on our uh, moratorium, and I think that we need to double down on that. As we heard tonight, we have development still going to continue to happen in Deltona, and I'm very pro-development, but I'm very pro-do-it-the-right-way development, um, and we heard that tonight. The points that I brought up in my denial for that project are very legitimate points, and I would remind you all that the Board of Education, when making this assessment about what is capacity, what is concurrent, currency, fail to mention the teacher shortage in their formulation. You may go up to over 100% capacity in a school, but what they're taking into account is the actual facility. If you take the ratio of teacher absence and apply it to that, you are now looking at 150 to 160% over at, a, at capacity, and no one's talking about that, and we need to talk more about that when we're approving these developments and using some outdated, archaic formula for the Board of Education, our city needs to go to task about that. We need to talk to the county about it. We need to talk to the state. The state is very lax on that point, and it really sucks for our children. And it sucks for development, and it sucks that we're not talking about what concurrency really is and as far as it goes to our comprehensive plan. So I want us to, if you want to talk about doing it for the children, then do that. Do your due diligence and expect more from the Board of Education. Ruben Colon and I I have talked about this at planning and zoning meetings, and I'm getting sick and tired of hearing that we have capacity from the school board when it's just a la-la land fairy tale. So take that. Um, and as far as that, thank you all very much. Congratulations to everyone coming up uh, that is sitting on this dais. And on a personal note, we do have different personalities up on this dais. I've worked with everyone up here in some capacity or another, except for Mr. Colwell, um, over the time. And, um, you know, I have things that I could be pissy about too, but I refuse to because it does nothing for my residents. And, and I make the pledge and honor that pledge to work with each and every one of my commissioners um, and um, to get things done for the community as a whole. And, you know, there's always room for improvement for everybody. Remember that it's progress, not perfection. And um, that we all need to try to do a little more of that. Thank you. Mayor, if, Mayor, if, you, if you allow me, I need to. Thank you. I just um, forgot to mention the Volusia Regional Juvenile Detention Center is officially open. Uh, I went to the Grand uh, Ribbon Cutting, and it's a really nice center. If anybody has a chance, please go out. They'll give you a tour, and it's off on Old Land um, Boulevard in Del Daytona Beach. Thank you, Vice Mayor Bradford. A couple things. Um, we did have changes to revise the charter. Um, I'm not sure if we can get a copy of that or if that's been updated yet and sent out. I was looking in our drop boxes and I didn't see it. Um, I did notice we had our operating and meeting guidelines. I encourage all the commissioners to please look at this and look at the charter and understand sunshine violations. Um, we do have the parade, it's exciting. We've went a couple years without the parade. So I'm excited that we have this parade back. This commission up here, we fought for this parade this year and I know we have a lot of excited residents. So I encourage everybody on Never Ever Love at 6.30 on Deltona Boulevard. Um, get there early because it's gonna be packed. Um, I noticed the mayor has town hall meetings posted for each district. Have those town hall meetings been posted properly for each commissioner to show up? I know there was a posting online, but there was nothing for District 2. So we just confirmed District 2 today, and that should be up by tomorrow. 
but does that have to be posted by the city as well? Yes, properly, okay. I just wanna know before, you know, when show up at the meeting and it's not properly posted. We're gonna, we're gonna they're be posted, but it'll also be taped, so we'll have a record of the, uh, of the activities that took place. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Jessup brought up a very important thing, and that's the war zone. If you watch Next Door and other items, you're gonna hear quite frequently people, that's one of the number one topics, gunshots. Did you hear that? Oh my gosh, did you hear that? I don't know what we can do as a city, you know, and I do understand his concern. He's very close to it, and I'm sure it rumbles. I don't know if this is something that as a commission we can decide in resolution to present to the county or if it's even gonna be, you know, that's viable. Because we, it's in De Osteen. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to take a look at it. I don't, I'm not familiar with what, what he's been talking yeah. about, but there are uh, a lot of laws associated with guns and firing and the owner's rights and the land owner's right, rights and all those kind of things, so. And it is the counties, I believe it's yeah. their, their practice range, so. But it may be something that we need to be more proactive on informing residents what it is. Is it because a county that's range? Is one it? of the biggest topics is, oh my gosh, I heard gunshots, oh my gosh. And it's, it's constant on next door. We'll check so. it And you wonder why. Um. Not in your life. Also, one of the questions I had as well, um, you know, I think we were deciding on the search. Can we please have some order? Was the, the city manager search, and if we were, um, when it was gonna be presented to us, are we gonna go with the existing firm, or I think we were all looking at possibly getting the list up here for the new commission to look over the firm? We had, uh, I had circulated, uh, I don't know, what, a month ago, a uh, memorandum that indicated you have these firms you've already collected data on, and uh, if you would wanted to select one of those firms, that would shorten the time as far as um, you know getting started in the recruitment process. I haven't heard back from the commission at this point, but I can recirculate that information because we have a new commission right now. Yeah, and that was my concern, is yeah. the commission that you circulated that to is not really here anymore. So if maybe we can recirculate it so all of the new commissioners can you know, take a look at those and decide, yes, we wanna utilize the existing search. Okay, I'll do that. And then we can get that selected and get you rolling on that. Miss um, Bryant brought up the emergency response team. Um, is it possible that you can get us all some information on that? I'd also like to know, you know, why it was stopped, what's the liability on that? extra insurance, you know, anything that goes with that, you know, emergency response team. I don't necessarily think it's a bad idea. I just want to make sure that, you know, liability-wise we're covered on that as well. And also, we do still have our policy books back here. I don't know if the policy books in the back were removed due to our emergency response was in here. Not quite sure, I think it was just a mishap on them not being returned. It was just an oversight, it's in that Just closet. an oversight, great. So Mr. Bryant, those will be returned back at the next meeting. And Mr. Jessup also brought up the fact of um, the question of doing a committee to celebrate former mayors. Is anybody else interested in that? I'm all for it, Commissioner. And I would suggest it's not just, you know, the past mayor, you know, we have two significant, you know, three, you know, a few past mayors, and it might not be a bad idea to, to do something in celebration of our past mayors, you know. So what would you like for that to, do we need to have a census on forming a committee for um, something for our past mayors? Yes, whatever you'd like to do, Mayor. Do we need a motion? 
or just consensus? consensus? Consensus motion, anything that gets, uh, just gets us to the point of you know, getting the group together. Okay, so I'm just asking for a consensus to form a committee to celebrate our past mayors in the city of Deltona. Yeah. Yeah, please get it done. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna everyone, yes. everyone agrees. I think there's a, everybody's a unanimous uh, consensus. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah, we I'm have unanimous consensus. Thank you, thank you. I just wanted to see if there was anything else. And then there was also a few questions that um, I believe Ms. White had. If we can maybe get um, some comments to those, that'd be appreciated when we get a chance. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner McCool, you're on the board. Did you have something else before I go to my closing? I did. I just misspoke and I need to clarify because um, I said that we need to contact our school. It's not our school board. I meant to say our school district. So I apologize uh, about that, uh, but I want to clarify for the record. Thank you. And then uh, in closing, so there's um, five things I want to touch on super quick. So number one, we've, um, I've been working with the city, interim city manager Chisholm, and it seems like we're gonna be able to bring the Red Cross to set up a pop-up site. And I know he's working hard on that as well. So we can help some of the residents in Daltona that have been affected by Hurricane Ian and Hurricane Nicole. Um, there is a limit, I believe, from one to four people in a household. They're doing like a $510 deductible or to help with their deductibles. But the point is, is that these are the these are the important things that we can bring to our residents that that they need. So that's one of the things uh, I wanted to bring up. The elections are done. Um, I'm here to represent the residents of Daltona. I don't care what party any of us are from. We need to work together in unity for the benefit of our residents. Um, and I think that's extremely important. And I think we showed some of that today uh, when we went to went to bat for our residents. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, number, number four, trust. Sorry, number three, trust. So I requested that we start, we're asking you guys, the residents, for those of you watching, those of you who are here, we're asking you to trust us. And I think that that goes both ways. And as a matter of fact, it should start from us up here. So I asked as a request that we remove those barriers that are over there so you guys can see that we're giving you that, that trust. I'm not afraid of our residents. I'm not at all. I, I've never seen in the history of our residents any buddy come in here with violence or anything like that. Do I wish we had better decorum? 100%. But this is still America, right? So. I'm trying to show that we want to trust you and we want you guys to trust us. Disagree with us when we're wrong, 100%. But give this commission an opportunity to prove to you that we're gonna do what's right for you, the residents of Deltona. Um, I, I, I ask as a personal thing, these glasses up here, some of them even have some spit marks or whatever they are, we need to take those down. We need to show that we as a commission are united, that we're together. And I feel that these are more of a barrier than anything. I can hardly hear what anybody's trying to tell me. We have to be moving around. Um, I, don't feel, I don't feel unsafe with anybody up here. So that, that's, just, that's just my thought. Uh, fourth, in my office, I have these little things called pocket constitutions. Anybody that comes and has a meeting with me, I have a, I, I ordered 5,000 of these. You guys are welcome to have them. They're free. They're given out by Hillsdale College. You know what? Learn your constitution. That way you guys can learn what this is all about. So that, that's something important. And then lastly, we just had an election and um, unfortunately the largest city in Volusia County has a vacancy right now where we're not really represented on a county level. What is it gonna take for us to have, historically, the person that won where there's a vacancy just gets appointed? Do we need to write a letter to our county council so they can appoint who we elected right away instead of waiting till January and not have representation on that county council? City attorney? Mayor, you certainly can do that. There's absolutely no obligation or no 
uh, reason why you can't request that. Now, I don't know what activities or what business the county would be taking up in that interim period, but you can certainly ask that they be allowed to participate. I'll give you a very good quick example. Right now, there is a plot of land that I don't know what they're doing it, but it's, it's owned by the county, and it's flooding one of our neighborhoods. And uh, it's when, when we looked at it on a map, and I'm talking about um, the resident Brandy White, we're looking at to see how or why it was flooding. It seems like the direction of water is being moved. The problem is, is that that's, out of, that's outside of city limits. And who am I gonna talk to on a county level except the county chair who's extremely busy if we don't have a representative to speak to. So that, that's why I'm bringing it up. There is pressing matters that, uh, that we need to address at county councilman, and we don't have one right now. So can I, can I get consensus from here so we can get a letter to our county chair? What happened to Lowry? Who, Lowry? Yeah. So he had to resign in order to run for school board. I always call uh, Jake Johansson too. He can always get, he's elected now. Sorry? Well, Jake Johansson can start doing stuff too, you know. He, uh, him as well, but he, he doesn't get sworn in until January. Some of them are already running with feet underground. So, do I have consensus from the commission or not? Yes. I agree. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. So that ends commissioner comments, and if there's no further business, we are adjourned.